All right. Hello, everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. I hope the voice is coming good, and please invite your friends. Uh, supposedly today we will have a debate with me and between me and the sheikh from Egypt, but look like this guy, he want to debate in Facebook. So we told him, uh, uh, as long as he is making uh, some obstacles, uh, you can do it in Facebook, but still you have to call me in Skype. Be whatever you want to be, you know. Uh, this guy, he have his followers in Facebook, so he want to be famous there. He want to show them how hero he is. So uh, you can be in Facebook. Let us see what will happen. We will update you about that. Now, our topic is about uh, Quran and science because I keep receiving always, uh, you know, comments uh, from Christians, Muslims, etc. about what it's called uh, science in the Quran. Now, you know, I did, I did make uh, my first two books is refuting almost maybe 100% uh, of, the, of the science claim is exist at that time when I made the book. But I noticed lately there is Muslims they come with a new uh, you know claims. But anyway, if one claim is is a lie, the rest of them is a lie too. Because you know how you can trust a liar to tell you tomorrow a true story. You know a, a, a truthful person, uh, he will tell a truthful story. It doesn't matter for first time or second time. So if we prove one lie, we prove all of them to be a lie. Uh, you know. You know, you know, you learn about people from experience. You do not need to uh, to prove that this time this person is liar always. You know, if you prove him liar once, twice, it's enough to prove that he is always liar. You know, in the Middle East, we say you cannot make a tail of uh, of a cat or a dog straight, even even if you put it in the frame for a thousand year, because simply this is how it is. You know, and you try to make somebody is a liar. This have not. This has have nothing to do with uh, being a Christian or a Muslim. If somebody is a liar, he's a liar. He cannot fix himself. He cannot help himself. Now God changed people, right? Which means you can be a liar one day and you repent. But in the case when you lie in the name of God, and you lie and you know you are lying, but because this is your religion teaching you, you can lie. This is a different story. Which means there is no hope for this person to be fixed, because this is his religion. It's approving him to lie. So Muslims are allowed to lie, and this is what people don't, they are not aware of. They think if somebody, he have a, he have a long beard, that's mean he is a religious man, and he will not lie. You know, I debated uh, this guy, his name, uh, Sheikh Rohi, just uh, two weeks ago. And he himself, and you can go, actually, I don't know if any of you make a cut of that part, but look like nobody. Where well, he said, I asked him about his prophet taking an oath on a, in, 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 a, in the book of the Jews, the Torah. He said, yes, the prophet, he took oath on the book, but he don't mean it. He don't mean it. So a Muslim, he will take an oath. If his prophet is willing to take an oath by the name of his God, saying, I believe in thee and the one who sent thee, and then the Muslims, they confirm to us that their prophet, yes, he is taking an oath, but he don't mean it, which means he's a liar. He's a fraud. If you ask me to take an oath, let us say I came to the court, you are a judge, and you say, take an oath that you are telling the truth. And then I put my hand in a book, doesn't matter what the book, let us say it's the Quran. And I say, I, be, I, you know, I, I swear I'm going to tell the truth and only the truth. And then I lie. And then people, they ask you, your brother here, he lie. How he can be a Muslim? He says, oh, he don't mean it because the prophet, he did the same. So Muslims, they have no problem to take an oath, false oath, to lie to you because simply it's part of Islam. As long as it is about defending or promoting Islam, there's no problem with that. You know, there's no problem. Lying for a good reason in Islam is good. This is, what they, this is how they justify it. What is the reason to lie to you about the miracle of the Quran? Is to make you believe in Islam. And that make Quran, or sorry, sorry, the lie is a good lie. So the Muslim believe there's a good lie. Or let us say, what about lying to Christians about the Prophet? He did something because this is about defending Islam. We know those Christians will not convert, but now we need to defend Islam. So what we can do? We lie. And that for them is a good lie. So Muslims, they believe in two kinds of lies. There's good lies and there's bad lies. 
and one of the good lies too Muhammad he said you can lie in three cases to your family to your friends and to your enemy and for God's sake who is left if I lied to my family my wife and look how the Muslim they try to make it something silly they say okay what if your wife she asks you if she is a pretty and she is not what you will say you are ugly you see the excuse how silly it is this is not about ugly and beauty this is about a lie if your wife is not a beautiful for you why you marry her why you put yourself in a situation you see a woman she is ugly but you marry her is that because she is rich like what Muhammad he did for Khadija so she was asking him are you beautiful am I beautiful he say yes but in fact you don't like old ones lying is a line and the Bible say clearly that the father of all lies is the devil now we can do lie and we are not perfect and we are not prophets and we are etc but if a person try in a Muslim they try to present to us Muhammad is the best of mankind and their God is God so you can you know okay the best of mankind he lie and the God of the best of mankind he lie so who is left I mean why I want to feel guilty about myself being a liar if the God of Islam himself is a liar so let us not waste time and go right away to the miracles please guys invite your friends we have only few people here yet uh, invite your friends let them join us uh, and let us go straight to the topic in the front of us here there's a Muslim website it's called the religion of Islam <clears throat> The earth atmosphere, a miracle in the Quran. The Quran and a human embryonic development, a miracle in the Quran. The Quran on mountains, the miracle of the Quran. The Quran and the origin of the universe, miracle of the Quran. Uh, the Quran and can the berm, carberm, I don't, I'm not sure what is that. A miracle of the Quran. Quran on seas and rivers. Okay. Quran in deep sea and in internal waves. Quran on the cloud uh, scientist uh, comment on the specific uh, scientific miracles of the Holy Quran miracle of the iron miracle of the expanding universe the victory of the Roman and the lowest uh, point of the earth uh, Quran and on a spider webs part one and part two okay Quran and spider webs part two of part two are we done that's all I'm so disappointed because there is a bigger list maybe I need to go to different website but let us see you know who is the Muslim want to choose for me a miracle of those to speak about it and my job is to get it busted who is a Muslim here in the text with us or he want to call me in Skype and he can choose actually not even not even one in the list he can come with anyone he he knows who is a Muslim want to give me a call and he want to show me a miracle if it's a miracle if it's true it's a miracle scientific miracle as you Muslims claim then it must be your God must be a true God I mean amazing how that can be so who want to do that who is a Muslim want to give me a call anyone You see, I'm giving you a chance to show the Christians, the Jews, the Hindus, the Buddhas, uh, the normal, the weirdo, you name it, to show them that Islam is from God. Who is the Muslim want to help us in that process? And again, as I said, you do not need to choose any one of those. You can come with your own. I mean, just tell me which one. I am here to make a challenge to prove to me that in the whole Quran, in the whole Quran, from the cover to the cover, there is one scientific fact. Just one. Who want to do that? Who want to do that? Don't tell me you Muslims are not ready. So all, all those articles is done for who? There's thousands of videos, thousands of articles. If you go and search Quran and science in the internet, you will find endless 
website speaking about science five amazing scientific miracles in the Quran that's amazing five only five I thought they would say five hundred five thousand no it's five what is the five amazing scientific miracle in the Quran Sharik Hafiz by by who by Sharik Hafiz how are you doing Sharik Hafiz nice to meet you obviously from Pakistan or something like this at the time it was revealed at the Quran described the fantastic marvelous picture of the what genetic solar bodies endless oceans individual cells and many other wonders that exist in the God God's domain that's fantastic we will show them our sign in the horizon my friend we did not show we did not see the horizon of your God yet and we did not see any of the signs because all of those you are talking about this is not the signs of your God those what is the Western the kuffar they discover and you claim now that it's fit with your Quran because what if the kuffar never discover this you see Allah here is speaking to who speaking to you Muslims so Allah show the Muslims or show the kuffar Allah did not show you did not show the kuffar because the one who discovered what you claim of science is discovery of not even single one of them is the, the discovering of the of the Muslims let us go and see mount information is often simplified as a collision of two tectonic plates pushing mass upward however it is often overlooked that this collision produce an equal upper uh, up important downward etc okay okay let us go to the verse directly that hit in the snake hit the head of the snake have we not made the earth resting place and the mountain as a stakes chapter 78 verse number six seven if i go right now to the islamic website and i show you the verse you would die from laughing let us do that 78 6 and 7 all right you ask for it This is the Muslim translation, all versions of translation, not my translation. I have nothing to do with it. Big Tal, Sahih, Muslim, Intel, whatever. Let's put the rest. Hold on. Because the rest is even more funny. I will I will highlight them all. Because that will make it more, more funny. Okay. Have we, have we, have we not made the earth as a wide expenses? I want to see where in the whole verse it says wide and expenses. All right. Haven't we made? Have we Haven't we not spread spread the earth like bed? This is close to the truth. <laughs> the earth is a flat. This is what he's saying. This verse saying that this earth uh, we made it we 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 made it flat like a bed. Didn't we make the earth a cradle? Cradle for uh, is the earth is a cradle? Is the earth is a bed? Is it? You see, they are the one who choose the verse. They are the one who pick up the miracle. We they are the one who mention it, and I am just reading what they are translating. Haven't we made the earth rest in place? It doesn't say that. Haven't we made the earth as a cradle? Earth and expenses, this not doesn't say that. Even expense no, doesn't say that. Place of rest, that doesn't say that. Like a bed, it says that. Like a bed, yeah, flat, like a bed. Uh, have, 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 have we not made the earth as a bed? Eh, close. Have we not made the earth expenses? Doesn't make, this says that. Rest in place doesn't say that. Cradle is it's a close, it's a bed. Uh, uh, did we not make the earth a, a, a bed? Close. Rest in place? No, it's a bed. 
uh, a, a spreading all of those meaning all of those meaning some of them they are getting close some of them they are not but if you go in the website which the Muslims they made their article in where is the article here we go have we not made the earth rest in place you see how they lie right away in the translation nowhere it says the word resting and nowhere it says the word place or what the verse in the Quran saying have we not made the earth as a flatbed and in order to prove that this is what it means I'm going to go and see what the Muslim scholars says about this verse whatever they say we will take it as simple as that you know if they say it is uh, you know something else then it's something else that's mean I'm wrong okay so chapter again 78 verse number six we go to the book of tafsir I remember the one is going to show us now the meaning of this is the scholars of Islam this is not a Christian prince we go first to tafsir al jalalain tafsir al jalalain is uh, uh, considered as a new tafsir uh, uh, like uh, if you compare it to other tafsir right here we go haven't we made the earth a cradle a bed like cradle okay this is the tafsir al suppose it is tafsir by the way but this guy he said nothing he just repeat the verse i mean this is weird i mean where is the tafsir tafsir mean interpretation <laughs> he just repeated the word because there's nothing there to say read this one Allah then he mentioned the blessing bestowed upon them saying have we not made earth expenses and a place to sleep you see between two bracket this is what the translator he added you see it in the in the scholar words there's no expenses and those crazy stuff we made it as a place to sleep place to sleep how you sleep the word used in the in the Arabic is mahad this is why we see many of them they saying cradle 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 so what the cradle is about it's a bed and the bed is a flat you know we are not uh, even the ostrich have a flat nest uh, all creatures they don't sleep over a ball unless you are a bird who will sleep I mean on the branch of a tree so what the Quran saying here from the beginning that the earth is a flat now to confirm that that this is what the Quran saying we will go to different verse in the Quran and see a little bit more of confirmation And Allah, He made for you the land as a carpet, flat carpet. Chapter 71, verse number 19. Translation, Yusuf Ali. Do you see it? Hey, between two, the two brackets, that's, that's not really in the verse. This is his addition to make you understand. So, Allah, He made the earth as a carpet. What carpet is about? Carpet is a flat space. Carpet is not a ball. Carpet is a carpet, flat earth. So the Quran confirming that the earth is a flat in many places. Uh, and there is many, uh, uh, there is many videos in YouTube actually, you can search for them. Uh, you will see the Muslim scholars are, are arguing in TV that's the 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 uh, the scientists when they say the earth is not is not flat they are lying because uh, this is against the quran and the quran for sure uh you know saying the truth however the quran even saying the word clearly the word flat in different verse if we go to the quran we will find the word sutihat so it's not like because now he's saying carpet bed it might be not saying flat but there's a verse saying the word flat exactly so hat so hat 
is a roof which is a flat. This is what the word satah mean. وَإِلَى الْأَرْضِ كَيْفَ سُطْحَتْ Chapter 88, verse number 20. Translation. You see here, he said it's spread out. It doesn't say that. It's a lie. It's a lie. What's spread out? Sutihat is a flat. Change the translator. Shakir. Hmm. Vast expenses. It's a lie. I'm showing you all the translations so we can get them busted, all, all of them at the end. How it's a spread, it's a lie too. Because even if you say it's spread like carpet, still this is not accurate. It is, it says the word flat, flat specifically. Let us continue, Muhsin Khan. Outspread, it doesn't say that. So none of them gave us the accurate meaning. How we will understand now? What is the accurate meaning? How you as a Muslim, you will find out who is saying the truth, my friend. Let us go and see more translation. Chapter 88, verse number 20 again. 88. Where is the site? All right. Let us see all the translation with no exception. Spread out. It have been surfaced. It have been spread out. Out outstretched. Uh, spread out. Outspread. Spread out. Spread out. Spread out. Vast expenses. Spread out. Outstretched. Spread out. Spread out. Copy paste, you know. None of them is saying the truth. How we will get them busted? How we will get them busted? Simply, we go to the interpretation. And we can go to the interpretation in the same website, by the way. In the same website, they have a Bikathir as an example. Go to chapter 88. I hope we will not lose electricity. We have a storm here. I guess you guys, you can hear the rain, no? Yeah, don't tell me. The, the Quran in chapter 13, verse number 13 says that the, the thunder is an angel. Yeah, right. And when they ask, what is the 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 fire we see which is a thunderbolt he said this is the fire built of the angel who beat the cloud with it mm -hmm. true story science all right here we go so from 88 17 to 26 ibn kathir all right read with me carefully this is ibn kathir speaking and this is the modern translation. And at the earth, how it was spread out, spread, meaning how it's been spread out, expanded, and made it smooth. That's what he's saying. This is Ibn Kathir. And this is not what Ibn Kathir is saying in Arabic. In Arabic, the story is different. Let us get them busted just to show you how the English books always different from the Arabic books. If we go to Ibn Kathir in Arabic, this is the Arabic website, the same book, the same author, the same, the same interpretation. What the word in Arabic? Let us see. Let us start first with Al Qurtubi. And then we will go to Ibn Kathir. Hmm. Sutihat. Where is the interpretation of Sutihat? 
look like he did not inter give interpretation for it because the Arab they knew what is that is about Sutihat. It's a flat. Ah, here we go. Ay busitat wa muddat. Ay busitat wa muddat. I will take copy paste and I will go to Google Translation. In the front of you, let me open Google Translation in a second. And I will show you from Ibn Kathir because we show it to you in English. I will show you how 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 big the difference it, it is between what they say to you in English books and what it is in Arabic books. We open Google Translate, right? This is the word as we showed you. We copied it from the Muslim website. Again, I will do it in the front of your eyes. Let us open the screen. Here we go. أي بسيطة ومدة. Go into Google. Then we will copy actually the word as it is from the Quran. Simplified and extended, not correct. Let us do this. Let us copy the word from the Quran as it is. سطحت. Where is Google Translation? What happened? I did not close Google Translation. It's gone. <laughs> Hold on. What happened to this website? This here. Let us open it again. This is the word as it is from the Quran. Here in, in Google translation, it's coming as level, but this is not enough to prove anything yet. We need to give, to give you more confirmation about the meaning. Let us go and see in English a little bit. And we will go back to Ibn Kathir. Here we go. Finally, the truth is appearing. And the earth, how it was laid out flat. Do you see it? Do you see it? So what out expenses and we expenses? The Arabic is something, the English is something. All the English translation, all the English interpretation have nothing to do with the Arabic interpretation. They lie when they translate to you. Here, a mistake. Obviously, this is a mistake. I mean, the, the, the translator, he must be stupid. I, I mean, when I say stupid, I mean he is being honest here. And this is stupid because according to Islam, you should defend Islam. You should not say the truth. Why he, may, why he said the truth? Why he said it's flat? Why? This is, should not happen. This is a mistake. Here we go. Now we got the Quran busted. Let us change the interpretation. Ibn Abbas. Hmm. And the earth, how we spread it over the water. Over the water. Okay. All those scenes, signs for them. So now we confirm that the Quran is saying that the earth is a flat. But there is something I did not finish yet. We confirm to you that it says a flat in a Jalalain, but we need to show you how the Arabic trans translation to English from Ibn Kathir is different. I will go to Ibn Kathir. I'm sure some of you speak Arabic, whereas Ibn Kathir. Al Tabari, Al Qurtubi. Uh, here we go. This is Ibn Kathir. All right. Um, where is the word sotihat? Here we go. Ay kayfa busitat wa wa muddat wa muhidat. 
A, كيف بسطت ومدت ومهدت. But the translation doesn't say that. The translation does not use the word besought. Besought mean a carpet again. Do you see how do you see how the translation in Arabic have nothing to do with Ibn Kathir in English? I will take this as it is and post it in Google Translation again. You know, Google Translation is not really accurate, but you know, it's just to help us. How Simplified, you see the word here, busitat, the, the, the Google coming uh, showing it's uh, a busitat because it, it can come in Arabic as uh, the word uh, basit, which means simple. So, the, the, this is the uh, wrong translation of Google. So, how busitat, how it made it flat, stretch and baft, which means make it flat, you know, make it level, as simple as that. So, the Arabic, Arabic Ibn Kathir have nothing to do with the English of Ibn Kathir. And then you ask yourself why for very simple reason because they don't want to expose their religion the translator he translated now not in the time of Ibn Kathir so he will not like to to say the truth at this guy here trying to be more honest his name is uh, Firas Hamza whatever his name so he said and the earth how it was laid flat if you see all the interpretation they confirm that this is about a flat earth now we go back to the verse which is mentioned in the miracle somebody is saying uh, why people they are not uh, uh, giving a like to the video why do they want to give a like there's nothing here to like don't give a like give it dislike please chapter 78 verse number six and seven so we go back to ibn kathir to see what this is 78 is about Remember, I'm using the same liar translation just to get it busted. All right. Read with me carefully. This is the same liar who made the false translation for the verse before it. Have we not made the earth as bed? You see the word bed? In the article, the word bed is gone. There's no bed. If you go back here to the miracle claim, there's no, there no bed. Where is the bed? It says, if you read with me, have we not made the earth as a resting place? You see, there is difference between rest in place and bed. Because rest in place for who? When you say the word bed, especially the mahad, you see the word mahad is mentioned in the Quran in different place. The mahad is a bed for a human being. For a creature who sleep normally. And that is mentioned when it's about Jesus. The Quran said, that Jesus, he spoke in the bed, in the cradle, the baby cradle. All right. Chapter 3, verse number 46. Here, the guy, he translated the childhood, but this is not true. The childhood have nothing to do with this. He spoke in the cradle. The word there is a cradle. Let us do a different translation. Do you see it? Do you see how just a change in the translator, how the word change? What childhood? Every child is speaking the childhood. Child is a child. When we say child, he can be 13 years old. There's a huge difference between a baby speaking in the in the in the cradle and saying in the childhood. That's why if you take your knowledge from translators, they fool you. Until now, I could not find an one honest Islamic translation. So 
this is what the mahad is the same word is speaking about how the earth level is it's a mahad it's a cradle it is a bed now we continue and then in the article they say in verse number seven what the, the what the verse number seven saying let us see we go to the tafsir okay and the mountain as pigeons meaning he made them as pigeons for the earth to hold it in a place make it stable and firm this is is so that they may be suitable for dueling and not to quack with those who are in it the muslim they will say to you that the mountains according to science they make a balance for the earth but this is not what the verse is saying if we go back to the article look what they say The mountains are even described as being set firm and as a stabilizer once again modern science has led us to believe that mountains root structure help keep tectonic plates from firm and less shake able my friend <laughs> less shake able does not mean it does not move the Quran says it is a firm it does not move so it will not move on them. The earth is moving non-stop under our feet. As an example, if you go to Japan, they have a lot of mountains. Japan actually is a is a is the capital of the mountains. But yet they have an amazing number of earthquakes every day, sometimes seven, eight thousand earthquakes. Some of them you feel them, some of them you don't feel them. So having a mountain in your area does not mean that the earth is not moving on you. And look how they, they, they try to fool you saying, oh, the mountains are made to stabilize. That's false. The mountains is a sign of an stabilized area. As an example, if you go right now to Hawaii, you will see that the volcanoes are mountains. Is that a stable place? Is it Hawaii is not moving? What this have to do with this is absolutely false and the Quran when he used the word pigeons, which is nails Speaking of You know when you say when I say I made the mountains as a nail. What does that mean? It's mean uh, the mountain is placed on the ground and then I dig it in It's not coming from inside If you go to the front verse in the Quran And we search for the mountains. Let me show you how we got them busted, as usual. Oh boy. In different verse, in different verse, the Quran says, chapter 27, verse number 88, you think that the mountains are fixed, but the fact the mountain is moving like a cloud. Translation. You see the guy here, he says hills. It's not hills, it's mountain. You think they are fixed, solid, but the fact they are flying like the cloud. The Muslims, they will say to you, oh, you know, this is not really about now. This is about the judgment day. Allah will make them fly. But this doesn't say that here. What judgment day? Let us continue. Uh, 
all those verses by the way about the mountain but we want to show you here we go this is the same verse we are talking about this is the verse we want chapter 79 verse number 32 what it says read carefully with me please Here they translate, he had it firmly fixed. That's not true. Arsaha, it is about he placed it there. He placed it in the top. He placed the mountains in the top of something. Let us go and check that with a different translation. Translation. Here, let us go to uh, Shakir. He made them firm. That's not true. Big tal. He made fast the hills. What is that? This guy is went so far. Muhsin Khan. Firmly fixed. Hmm. You know the word rasa, like when when we say uh, the, the the ship. When you say the ship arrived to the port, that is rasa, you know, like it doesn't move no more. It's not about being fixed. It's about it is something set, set. And usually it's speaking about something floating in the water. If we go to the interpretation, just to get the correct meaning of this, chapter 79, verse number 32. Read carefully, please. And he has set firm the mountain on the face of the earth so that it stays still. Now we got the meaning. He did what? You see the word set? This is what I'm talking about, the word arsaha. Arsaha, it's your set. You level yourself in something. Set. So Allah, he set the mountains. What set mean? He placed the mountain over the face of the earth. Read carefully with me. And again, Abdul, I'm not the one saying that this is your God and this is your scholar. This guy is named at Jalalain. He is not a Christian. He is not a Hindu. He is not a Buddha. And we can change the interpretation if you want. I can change to all of them, including Ibn Kathir. And has set, set, let us discuss the word set. Is the mountains something set on the face of the earth or the mountains is coming from down the magma? Especially the volcanoes. This is a very scientific mistake, not scientific discovery. According to Allah, Allah, he placed the mountains on the earth. And how we prove that? Let us get the Abdul more busted with their lies. Who knows what Islam is about better than the Prophet, peace upon him? Nobody. Nobody. Don't try. So if we go and we check what Muhammad said about this, let us read together. Hmm. All right. The message of Allah. Read carefully with me, Abdul. And this is a Sahih Hadith. Don't tell me this is a weak. Allah, the, the exalted, the glorious, created the clay on Saturday. What He created first? The clay. On Saturday. And the mountains on Sunday. And he created the trees on Monday. 
and he created the things entirely in labor on Tuesday and he created the light in Wednesday and he caused the animals spread on Thursday and he created Adam after noon Friday all right we are going to focus in the important one which is the mountains so forget about the rest the rest is not our important for now what is the first thing Allah created it is the clay hmm. and then how what what happened for a second he created the mountains so according to the Quran mountains created by Allah notice carefully there was a clay he created the clay and the second step is the mountains by the way there's a contradiction in the Quran two verses chapter 41 and chapter 79 they contradict each other about which one created first chapter 79 and chapter 41 they speak about different order of the creation we can talk about that later so now he created the mountains on Sunday do science speak that the mountains are created in a day it's called Sunday and then he created those mountains and then he placed them over the clay do you see it I'm not the one saying that Muslim this is your prophet all the mountains in the world are created in a day it's called Sunday Muslims are you watching are you going to say to me your prophet he's an idiot he do not know what he's talking about he's a liar are you going to say to me that your the prophet Muhammad he is paid by me are you going to say Muhammad ibn Abdullah is a Christian prince your prophet he claimed that all mountains in the world they created in one day it's called Sunday and obviously this is very scientific now we go back to the Quran We are not done yet. So the mountains are created and he placed it in the top of the face of the earth. So the earth will not, and it says firm. You see the Muslim, even in their translation in the article, they said it is firm, placed firm. Read with me carefully. Do you see? And the funny they are the one who is saying the word set do you see the word set what set mean set it's mean you place something in the top of something do we agree even in their translation you see that the, the fool who made this article he is really dumb you just say to me that the mountain set on the top of the earth but this is absolutely false the mountains is coming from the deep earth it is not set it is from the earth it's not something an object because the quran says what that what what that mean what what that mean the translator gave us what what that mean it's like nails you know the the things you put for the tent and remember muhammad is a bedouin right so he said like pages the, the, the nails you hold your tent with, this is what wetted. So we made the mountains outada. Outada. Why? Because Muhammad, he believed the earth is a flat. Then in the top of us, we have a tent, and that is the sky and the fence of the tent. If you remember, there is a chapter in the Quran, it's called the chapter of Qaf. Chapter Qaf. Let us go to English. In the chapter of Qaf, the Quran explained to us an amazing scientific discovery and I am not sure why the Muslims do not speak about it that much 
obviously there is something they don't like to talk about in the chapter of the tent will be explode by us not because there is a terrorist there because of the amazing science so this is a chapter of Qaw, verse number one what is Qaw? tell me what is Qaw. I want to learn Qaw. and from the, the narration and the authority of Ibn Abbas he said in the interpretation of Allah saying Qaf Qaf he says is an azure mountain overlooking this world and the color of the skies takes from it Allah swore by it okay so what we learn from this now we learned that there is a mountain it's called Qaf is surrounding the earth the earth is a bed this mountain is the fence of the tent in different verse we will see that there is a doom covering the, the, the tent actually here in the interpretation it says that what is the color we see of the sky why why the sky is a blue because that mountain is a blue mountain this is why we don't see it when we look at the horizon we don't see the mountain because simply it's a blue and this mountain is not in a place it is overlooking all the earth which means it's the earth is a flat how we can make a mountain overlooking the earth anybody can tell me how this mountain is going to be a fence around all the earth if the earth is a flat so because the Quran teach them that the earth is a flat and we have a fence this is why in different verse in the Quran Muhammad he said that we made the sky as a roof but before we go there we will show you a different verse before we go to the roof because the roof will take us to a different topic which is very funny too in chapter 88 verse number 19 what it does says big tag Do you see it? And the hells, how they are set up. It's a setup. Allah, He plays the mountains as a set up in the top. Do you see it? Again, the Quran confirming the same mistake again and again. If we go to the interpretation for this verse, chapter 88, verse number 19, let us do it. Chapter 88, verse number 19. And the mountains, how they were set, the mountain set. Do you see how the Quran explained the mountains? It is something set in the top of something. And this is absolutely false. I think the word set is very simple to understand, isn't it? I set on something, which means I am in the top of that thing. I am not that thing, I am in the top of it. As simple as that so the mountains are not part of the earth as the Quran speaking of it is something set on the top of the earth let us change the interpretation maybe the interpretation here is wrong I mean maybe this guy is an idiot let us, let us look for different idiot Tafsir Ibn Abbas the cousin of the Prophet and the hills were set up, are set up on earth and moved so he confirmed that the mountains are set in the top of something. Let us go to Ibn Kathir. Maybe Ibn Kathir, he is a better idiot. You never know. I mean, we have to give them all the opportunity to defend themselves. Chapter 88, verse number 19, Ibn Kathir. Let us open the front page for Ibn Kathir so we keep this one open. Science, huh? Hmm. That's true. That's true, my friend. Quran is full of science. I mean, who are you kidding me? There's nobody have science as much as the Quran. 
Allah is the God of science. Anything Allah he says, it's science. Even if he say hello. Because the Muslim, they will make a story out of it. All right. This is Tafsir Ibn Kathir. I hope Ibn Kathir is a smarter and he will not make Allah look like a fool. So he will try his best to lie to us. Let us see. Actually, the same chapter we are reading from before, right? Okay. And the mountains, how they are rooted. Rooted. Meaning, how they have been erected. What erected and rooted mean? Let me let me translate. I don't know what does that mean. Erected. What erected mean? This is the new word for me. Hold on. I, I'm not. Uh, uh, my English sometimes doesn't help me. I want to see what does this mean. Ah, that's good. That's good. That's a close to the meaning. So the mountains are stood in the top of the ground. You see it? So Allah, he rooted them down, yes. You know, he put them because the Quran says as a pigeons, as a, as, a, as a nails. So this is how he pushed them down. And he still they are standing in the top of the earth, but they are not part of the earth. For indeed, they are firmly affixed so that the earth does not sway with it is dwellers right. and he made them with the benefit of minerals they contain here we continue and the land how it spread out this is false it is how he made it flat how he made it flat actually you know what let us talk different verse from Ibn Kathir and see how he can get away with it if we go to the word to the verse sutihat What Ibn Kathir will say about it? Let us see how the lie, how far the lie will go. Chapter eighty-eight, verse number twenty. Where is? Here we go. Uh, he said that was uh, spread the translation. We, we proved that already actually we, we showed you in Arabic that the translation is different from the English one so all the Quran not only confirming that the Creator of the Quran is a stupid. He's ignorant He is teaching us fairy tale stories and the Muslim they try to make it as a science So what we learn from this that Allah he created the clay He placed mountains in the top of the clay and that the purpose is he put it as a pages so the earth will not move and the Muslim they made a miracle out of it when the fact all of this is a stupid lie for nobody can believe in such a garbage Mountains is not placed in the top of the earth mountains is coming from deep Inside the earth. It's upside down not up down Which mean Allah is saying that he put it down place it The verse is upside down of the true science the mountains is coming from the earth, not something placed on the earth. Actually, according to science, mountains, they grow every year. They are not fixed. Why they grow? Why they grow? Because they aren't fixed. As simple as that, there is a, a continued movement. You can go right now and see that the earth, even the ones, even in the place you think there's no earthquake, the earth is always moving non-stop we are swimming in the top of the magma the tectonic this is why there is an earthquake in the, in the world like i i live in the east coast in the west coast let us say i live in the west coast and an earthquake happened in america but doesn't mean that america is not moving people they filled the earthquake in that area where it was harsh but the whole america is moving it's not only that area 
You know what I mean? This is where the tectonic plate they meets. This is where the earthquake can be felt and can be dangerous. But doesn't mean that the other areas that are not moving. The Quran is speaking about that they are firmly fixed, which means they will not move on you. The flat earth will not move. Now, what is additional proof to prove that the earth is a flat in the Quran? There is tons of reference. And I am surprised that not, not even not even one Muslim he called me until now to prove me wrong. Like, may, what about you give me something maybe I'm not aware of? Any Muslim? In different verse, the same chapter, chapter Qaf. You see, we are here just to confirm more about those mountains, how they are placed in the flat earth. If you go in Khaf 7, the same chapter. Read carefully with me. And the earth we spread out. Actually, it says we made it flat. In Arabic, it says, Yes, it's spread out, but it's in the way of making things flat. You see, uh, do you know when you make, when your mother, she make a dough in the kitchen, like she's making pizza? This is what this is about, you know? It's it's about something you push in it and will make it flat. It's like the dough, you know, when you make a bread. Over the water and have flung firm hills firm mountains so it does not sway they're in on earth all right what the flung mean i want to be sure what the flung mean to be sure that this is correct meaning <clears throat> flung i know i don't know if the translation here is coming correct doesn't make sense Flung. If we go to the Arabic, we will understand. But anyway, let it let it go. So Allah He spread out the earth. You see, the earth now have no mountains. And then what He did, then He put the mountains in the top of the earth, so the earth will not move, because the earth is a carpet, as it's mentioned in different verses, it's going to fly. If we change the translation, let us see. I mean that the interpretation. The heaven, how we spread it out, and how we have rolled it across the face of the water. Actually, here, not the heaven, this is the, the earth. This guy, he made a mistake when he put the word heaven. He meant to say the earth. So, the earth, we spread it out. How we have ruled it across the face of the water and cast in it firm mountains to fix it so that the mountains is coming from where he cast it it's not from the earth we cast so we throw mountains in the top of the earth and this is totally stupid to believe that god he placed mountains in the top of something so that thing will not move right If we go to the chapter of an -Naziat, let us go to, go to an -Naziat, chapter 79, verse number 48. Uh, uh, sorry, not Naziat, I think Azariat, not an -Naziat, Azariat, yeah, an -Naziat. Right, hold on. al -Dariyat, al -Dariyat. Here we go. Because the other one doesn't even have 48. Uh, here we go. And the earth, the earth we spread out, we made it level. What an excellent spread spreaders then we are. 
Allah he confirmed that the earth is something spread out but this is absolutely against science we made it what we spread out totally the whole earth is spread out it's a flat thing change the interpretation and the earth have we laid out on water how gracious was the spreader maybe Ibn Kathir he have different scam let us see Ibn Kathir Ibn Kathir is smarter than all of them he would not say something stupid like this let us say what Ibn Kathir he will do 51 48 Uh, hold on, 48. All right. You remember we mentioned that the sky is a roof before? Do you remember? By the way, the Muslim, they make a miracle about it. They say, oh, Allah, he speak about the atmosphere. And we will spoke about that. We will we'll get them busted with that too. Well, this, this one, it's a big fat lie. So we constructed the heaven, meaning we made it as a high roof. Protected from falling. From what? From falling. Okay, take a note of that. Then he continues saying. Verily, we are able to extend vastness of space, therefore, means we made it vast and we brought it as a roof, its roof, higher without pillars to support it, and thus it's hanging independently. This is what they are saying in translation, but just wait, we will, we will show you that this is absolutely not, not true, too. Well, Ardu Farashnaha, and we made the earth Firash. What Firash? We made it as a resting place. That's false. Firash is a bed. Firash is a bed. You see the translator here is a big fat liar. If you go right now to the Arabic translation, the Arabic text of Ibn Kathir, you will see that this is have nothing to do with Ibn Kathir is saying. And we can do that right away. Remember, we are in chapter 51, verse number 48. So I can go right now to Ibn Kathir. Uh, Ibn Kathir. Arabic. This is why I say, don't ever take your knowledge from Islamic translation. Ibn Kathir. All right. Let us see what Ibn Kathir says in Arabic. والسماء بنيناها أي جعلناها سقفا محفوظة رفيعا which mean we made it as a protected roof high and Ibn Abbas and Mujahid and Qutada and Athawri and غيره واحد look 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 where is the names in the in the in the English book all those books read carefully with me قاله Ibn Abbas ومجاهد وقتادة والثوري وغير واحد where we can find those names in the English translation where we can find and Mujahid said and Ibn Abbas said we cannot find it do you see it anywhere oh, this is chapter 88 hold on this is the one Oh, here actually it says that hold on yeah but the translation here let us see extended vast of space therefore means we have made it vast we brought it as a roof higher with pill with no pillars let us continue in the arabic with no pillars uh, so we left it without pillars until now it's settled as it is so he lifted up, it was down. 
We lift it up. وَالْأَرْضُ فَرَشْنَاهَا أَيْ جَعَلْنَاهَا فِرَاشًا لِلْمَخْلُوقَاتِ Let us see what the word فِرَاشًا in Arabic and what the word فِرَاشًا translated in English. I will take it to Google Translation. Switch Arabic English. Paste. Bedding. It's a bed. And the bed is a bed. All the earth is a bed. All of it. It's a flat place. Continue. وَجَعَلْنَاهَا مَهْدًا لِأَهْلِهَا Again, he is repeating the word cradle to its people. Let us see if the word cradle there is exist. Uh, we made it resting place for its people. Not really. It doesn't say resting. It says a bed again. How excellent spreader, uh, etc. And now he says here, and we have created from everything male and females in pairs. And now for sure, this is a mistake because mule is mentioned in the Quran that is created by Allah, and a mule is a male, and there's no female mule. And there's many, many uh, creatures, they are not male and female, and there's some creatures, they are male and the female at the same time. But the Quran confirmed that Allah He made from everything living thing, every living thing, there is male and female, which is a scientific uh, error. Now, if we continue with Ibn Kathir, meaning all the created are pairs the heaven, the earth, the night, and the day. And remember carefully here what he says the night and the day. The Quran confirmed. That the night and the day are created and this is a mistake because you cannot create the night the Sun and the moon the land and the sea the light and the darkness would you just say the night and the day it's not enough right misery and happiness paradise and fire in addition to the animals and plants the statement of Allah the exalted so do you remember all right so here we have tons of verses speaking about the earth is flat. And there is something very funny actually in the Muslims. They claim that the earth is like a ball. If you search now in the internet, let me search in the front of you. Hold on. Because we have something will like this is will be the 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 the, the shot in the head. Quran, earth like a ball. All right. This is a different website speaking about this. All of this is an article about the earth is like a ball. But let us see if this is true or not. We have spread it out and set therein mountains standing firm. All right. Okay. The word satah. Look what, what, look, this is the article, huh? Uh, Madda in Arabic means spread out. However, it was mistranslated to flat. It was mistranslated to flat. And look what how and look how they beat themselves by themselves. The flat in Arabic is musattah. Do you see it, guys? Musattah. Do you see it? Musattah. Well, we just showed you the Quran saying the word musattah. <laughs> And its verb is to make it flat is sataha. Satah. Do you see it? This is their own statement. But this is what the Quran says. The stupid who made this article, he do not know that the Quran says the word satah too. Do you see the stupidity? Take a note. The word sataha or satah 
is a word mean flat they are confirming that and this is in the same article to proving to us that the earth is not a flat supposedly hold on we go to the Quran chapter 88 verse number 20 here we go this is the word satah <laughs> they are the one who said to us the word satah mean flat do you see the stupidity Aren't you the one who just said to me, you know, I will go, I will go to chapter 88, verse number 20 in this website because they write it in their own language, like, you know, with the Arabic, with the, with the uh, Latin letters, but in Arabic way. 88.20. Okay, go there. 88.20. All right. Read with me carefully. Uh, there's maybe one we did not highlight because usually they write it in their language. Earth spread out. Where is the guy who like they make it look and sound in Arabic? Huh? It's not here. Strange. Maybe they took it out. Hmm. Anyway, you see this word. This word, sataha. You know what? I'm going to take a snapshot for it, and I will type it for you in English too before we take a snapshot. I will take the first three letter. And I will take a snapshot so we can place it next to their article. All right. Now we have. All right. This is the word "sutihat" in the Quran, in the Quran, and this is their article. Let us place it in the top of each other. Do you see it? Any Muslim dare to say, "I am lying"? They are the one who said that the word "sutih." It is the word flat. In fact, in fact, look how smart the one who wrote the article. He thought now he is he's, he's defending the Quran. Brother, brother, in fact, the word flat is sataha. This is mistranslation. And here, musattah. Brother, musattah. Musattah is like, a, you know, like a... a, a uh, a name of it, like you know, like description, how it is. So, what is the word in this musattah? The word is here from the verb. What is the verb? He says, Sataha. I mean, thank you very much for helping me. Do you see it? This is the word. This is the word in the Quran. And that verse in the Quran saying what? And look at the earth, how it was made musattaha, flat. You just confirmed that. The same article trying to prove to us that the earth is round is the same article getting the Quran busted. You Muslim should give this guy who wrote this article or this study a prize. In fact, brother, in fact, the word flat is sataha. I assure you that this donkey, he never opened the Quran before. Because there's no way somebody, he knew the Quran very well. He do not know that the Quran using the same word describing the earth, that it is a flat. Do we have any Muslim want to say something? The same article proving the Quran to be miracle is the same article proving the Quran to be false. How you just say the earth, the what brother, the verse is mistranslated. 
it is mistranslation, brother. The verse, the verse here it says, uh, spread out and the Quran says that the God spread out the earth Madadnaha meaning increase in the service area during the formation Madda in, in Arabic mean spread out however it was mistranslated to flat flat in Arabic is Musattah You know what? I'm going to go to the Arabic English dictionary, Islamic dictionary. Hold on. Let me open it. Islamic dictionary. I wish all of you speak, you know, Arabic because that will make my work easier. A lot easier. All right. This is the Islamic dictionary Al Ma'ani. Al Ma'ani. So, what we will do, I will take the word as it is from the Quran. As you see, copy, paste in Al Ma'ani dictionary. He spread it, he spread it out. Quran word okay let us go to the word dimension Sattah. he spread out he stretch he grade he plan his surface he make it even he make it flatten he make it level he make it plain he make it surface he reduce uh, yeah, they are giving you all the meaning but anyway they themselves they confirm to us what the word mean in Arabic so hat is a flat flat level and you know we confirm already that from the from the interpretation to chapter 88 verse number 20 if you remember how you can spread something you spread over something is flat right what is the flat there is the earth okay and the earth how it was laid flat this is what the word sattahat is about So how the Muslims they try to make a miracle of something very stupid now we go to the Muslims speaking about the uh, 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 Hold on I this I, I forgot to mention this. I mean, this is horrible if I forgot it The Muslim they say that the earth is a is a like a ball and they use the word in the Quran where it says The haha We have more reference to prove that the earth is a flat in the Quran. We are not done yet. We are not done. What you would do with this one? What the ha mean? Chapter 79, verse number 30. Interpretation. And after that, he spread the earth. Even then, he spread it on water. By the way, how the water is, I want somebody to tell me. How the water is. When somebody said to you, I spread it in the water, is it in the water something flat in service? Level? You see, we can put the water in a container. The container can have any shape. Correct? But the face of the the surface of the water is always a flat is that correct 
So when we spread the earth over the water, what does that mean? Isn't it obvious that the earth is flat too? Because you can move the water to any container you want. The, the, the look of the container will not make any difference. Unless this container is like, uh, you know, have uh, like, uh, it doesn't have uh, like uh, edges. I mean, it's like a, a ball or something, you know. But that's mean that everything down is water. If you say that, that's mean there's nothing inside as rocks. There's nothing inside. And, you know, if we want to explain how the Quran work, you will see the Quran, all of it is based on fictions. Uh, uh, you know, uh, maybe we will mention this after we finish with this one about how the earth how it is because remember the Quran speak about the earth is carried in the top of a whale and there's a rock and there is etc and there is 4,000 spring of water etc so here Ibn Abbas saying this let us see a Jalalain and after that he spread out the earth and he made it flat for it had been created before the heaven, but without having been spread out. Okay, thank you very much. So Allah, He created the heaven before, after He created the earth. Take a note. Which one Allah created first? He created the earth first. And then He created the heaven. But how this can be? You know? Because the earth is inside the space, you know, the, the, the word heaven is like a religious statement, but it is the sky. And actually the Quran says the word sky too. So the earth is created before the sky. So where the earth was, we are just a little dust inside this, you know, this universe. You have to create space first. Then you create the thing for it. So if there was no heaven, where the earth was? This is what the Quran is saying. So the earth was created before the heaven was created, and the earth was not level. So Allah He made it flat. So that what mean He make it livable for you. You can live in it. It was not flat. Allah He made it flat. So this is from the favor of Allah on us that He made the earth flat for us. And you see how many verses of the Quran? The same verse in the Quran, speaking the earth is flat, the Muslim, they made it something else. A stupid Abdul, he posted in, you know, uh, uh, he, I think he learned from uh, uh, from Zakir Naik or uh, Didat, that the word Dahaha, my brother, the word Dahaha came from the word Dahya. You eat it, this is a different word. Daha, Daha is exactly when somebody make bread. You push something in the table, you know, you have like this piece of wood, the round thing, and you put it in the top of the dough, and you push and you spread out in the same time. This is what the word the haha mean. This is exactly what the word the haha mean. If I take now the word the ha and I take it to the dictionary. The same dictionary we used before. And I'm using this one, by the way, because not it's because it's, it's the best, but because it's in English and Arabic. Do you see it? He stretched it. He spread it. He stretched it. He spread it. Okay. So what he do, he stretch it. But how he stretch it? He stretch it in a flat surface. The ha. -ha. If you go to the word in in the in the Arabic. Let us see if we can go to the Arabic, Arabic, because in Arabic, 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 you can get the best meaning. Hmm. See how the Arabic changed right away. Right away, in a second, we just switch to Arabic, and right away they get the wrong, the right meaning, not like in English. It look funny. It says spread out. Here is different. The haha means basataha wa ausaha li sukna ahliha. Chapter 
and Naziat verse number 30. Let us copy, post in Google, paste in Google. <laughs> and what happened? What happened? Why, why always the English is different from the Arabic? Here we go. Copy, paste. Google translation. Spread it wide to accommodate the people. But actually here, the, the Arabic, it doesn't say that. It says, Basataha, made it flat, carpet, basat. The word basat is a flat. You see, if if we uh, if we take the word, actually, you know, hold on. Let me show you the word basat from the Quran. Because the Quran used the word basat, which means carpet. And how the carpet is? Basat. Wallahu ja'ala lakum al arda bisatan. Chapter 71, verse number 19. What does that mean? Look at the liars when they translate. And he made the earth wide expenses for you. It doesn't say that. It says he made the earth like a carpet. Bisat. Chapter 71, verse 19. We go to the interpretation. Do you see it? Do you see it? Who is the one saying that? This is Tafsir al Jalalain. You see it? This is what the word Bisat means. So even when you try to use dictionaries, when it's come to the Quran, the Muslims are sensitive. They try to cover up. They don't give you a correct translation. But look here. This is, by the way, this is the, the, the website of the King of Jordan. This is official government website. This is not a website made by this guy and that guy. You can click down at contact and you can contact them. This is a government website of Jordan owned by the king himself. So he made the earth flat. Look how many verses until now we have about the earth is a flat. And yet the Muslims, they try to fool us and say that the earth is like a ball in the Quran. Now, as long we are speaking about this, we have another verse connected to those stories. Will make will make us have a better understanding for how the Quran picture the universe, picture the earth. You know what what is what is the what what is the vision of this book? Because we have to put all those images already we saw in the Quran, put them together, try to understand the Quran, and try to understand what Muhammad believe in, how the Quran, how the how the earth is, how the sky is, how the the mountains is, and we, then we will understand. So we will go to different verse. Let us see. Uh, All right. Let's go. We need to go to hey, let's go to this one. In the Quran, in chapter 68, verse number 1, you will see the Quran says here, noon. Noon. Anyone before heard a name in the Bible of noon? Anybody heard of the word noon? No? Check out in the Hebrew language and try to find out what is noon. Noon 
noon in the in the old and ancient Aramaic is a word mean whale whale or a fish but big huge which is a whale in chapter 68 verse number one It says, Noon wal qalamu wa ma yasturun. What is noon? Doesn't make sense. The Arab, they could not find out what this is known as about. What is that noon? Noon is, in Arabic, is a letter. It doesn't make sense. I mean, imagine you start as a, a chapter in the Quran. This is chapter number one, verse number one. This is the first verse in the Quran. And the first supposedly is the first thing to say is a word. So why he's saying noon? Noon is a letter. But noon is a letter in the Arabic language, but in the Aramaic it is not. It is a name. You see, the Muslims, they pronounce the word and they write it down. They are not writing a word, really. They are pronouncing. It's a, let us say, the Quran was not given to them as a book. They are writing the book. So what the Prophet said, he said noon. But noon is not really a letter. It is a word. But this is how it appears in Arabic. So noon. Now what noon? Noon is a wheel. Okay, what does that mean? We have no idea. Let us go and see what the Muslim they believe about this. Whatever the Muslim they say, we will take it. And that will give us a better image and understanding of what Islam believe in regarding the earth and the mountains and the sky. Chapter 68, verse number 1, and we go to the interpretation. Bingo. This is a scholar of the Islamic religion. He says, Noon is one of the letter of the alphabet of God. What? What is that? <laughs> Noon is one of the alphabet. This guy is trying to find an answer for this, so he comes with the solution. Noon is one of the names of the alphabet. I mean, you are genius. You are genius. How do you find out that? If we change the interpretation for the cousin of Muhammad, who is a, a lot higher scholar than this guy, what you will say? Read carefully. From the narration of his authority, Ibn Abbas. Ibn Abbas is the cousin of Muhammad. He is he is a person who lived in the time of Muhammad. Actually, he is the only one Muhammad he prayed to Allah to make him which means the, the ink of his scholarship, which means he is the scholar of the scholars. So this guy, there's no way he will make a mistake. And for sure he learned this from, from, from his cousin, Muhammad himself. He said, regarding the interpretation of Allah saying no. Okay. Tell us more. Tell us more. I hope the text is clear for you guys. Noon, he says, Allah swear by noon. Allah swear by noon. Okay. Must be a great swear. Which is a wheel that carries the earth on its back in water and beneath which is the bowl, which is what? So now we have a wheel and this wheel is carrying the earth in the top of it. And beneath the wheel, there is a bowl. And under the bowl is the rock, and under the rock is the dust, and none knows what is under the dust save Allah. Here the knowledge of this does the Abdul stop. Like, please don't ask me more more. Please, 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 please. I cannot tell you any more information because my knowledge is stopped there. Allah knows best what is after that. My knowledge is stopped with that rock. Please no, don't ask me. I don't know. Allah knows best. Okay? What noon, what whale, what ball? You can go right now and search in Google for the whale is carrying the earth. This is one of the legions, the Arab, they believe in. That there is a whale carrying the earth. And this whale is in the top of the, of, of the ball. Why we have earthquake? Because the whale is in the top of the horn of 
like some different cultures they believe that the earth is in the top of the ball directly there's no wheel so what what happened to the, when we have earthquake the ball he move sorry the the the, the yeah the ball he moved the earth from the left horn to the to the uh, uh, like right horn to change to you in a rest so when he move it that earthquake happened that is a very scientific explanation too but here muhammad is taking the legions of the arab and making it as a part of his quran the same as the flying carpet of suleiman it's in the quran chapter 18 verse number uh, you know you can read the whole chapter uh, the, the ring of Solomon, the flying carpet, the flying horse, the flying donkey, uh, uh, the, the, the bird who speak to Suleiman, uh, the ant who speak. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, all those are legions. Muhammad, he is just a legion collection. He collect stories, fairy tale stories, and he added to his Quran. And now, things is getting more complicated. Hold on. The name of the, uh, the, name of the whale is Lewish. And this is not Lewish for a con. Don't take me wrong. I'm not talking about Lewish for a con. Lewis for a con. This is different Lewish. That one is a is a whale too. So the name of the whale is a Lewish. And it's said that his name is Lotaya. I mean, you see, the Muslims are confused about the name. They are not sure about the name. Maybe his name is Lewish. Maybe Lotaya. Hmm. The name of the ball is a Bahamut. Okay, you know what? You can right now search for Bahamut. Bahamut, it was a symbolic of a beast. All right? And nothing wrong with, with using the word Bahamut from the old languages. But to believe that Bahamut is the ball who is carrying the earth, that is a different story. You, need, you see, like all of us, we use words is used by by people who don't believe in the true God in certain time. As an example, you when you pray, and the Muslim too, they say Amin. But Amin have nothing to do really with the Christians or the Jews or Amin is a word mean I believe, I agree in Aramaic. The Aramaic people they used to use it when they used to worship false gods too. So using the same word will not make you a pagan, but believing in the stupid things that will make you stupid and pagan. So here we have a Bahamut who is a bull, and this Bahamut is the one is carrying the earth, the, the whale in the top of it. And its name, Talahut or Liwana, the whale is in the sea, called Adwad. You see, the Muslims, they have the names of everybody. And it is like a small ball in a huge sea. Well, and thank you very much. It's a small ball, but carrying the earth. The sea is in the hollow wood rock, where, whereby there is 4,000 cracks. Look at this guy. He knows how many cracks in the ocean. And you are telling me that the, 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 the Western are the one who you know discovered the, the diving equipment? How, how Muhammad and how the Ibn Abbas, he knew how many cracks down in the ocean? How he knew that? And the funny, there's 4,000 cracks. I will be upset if it's like 3,999. 3, Thank Allah. It is 4,000, not 3. I don't, it's not, I don't like the number of like 3,999. 4,000 cracks. And from each crack, water spring out of the earth. All right. Now you think you get the meaning of it, right? Hold on, no. Just to show you how, how much the Muslims are confused about what the Quran is saying. And it's also said, like, what the heck? So all of this was just one say? Yes, it was just one say. And it's also said that noon is one of the names of the Lord, the Lord of the Ring. It stands for the letter noon in Allah name Ar Rahman. <laughs> okay, question. If Allah swear by this letter, why this letter alone? I mean, what, what about the letter A and L and Ra and A and uh, uh, H and uh, uh, and uh, M? And, you know, I mean, why this letter alone? No answer. But the Muslims still, they are not satisfied with any answer yet. They have more answers for you. And it's also said that noon is an inquil. Look, 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 look. 
we started saying that noon is a whale then noon became the name of Allah then noon became an ink whale it's like a magical story I mean what is the connection between ink whale and whale and the name of Allah and also said that noon is an ink whale by Allah swear by the pen ah, Allah swear by the pen makes sense noon is an ink whale and Allah swear by the pen So Allah, He used ink to write Muslims. Hmm? Continue. Allah swear by the pen. This is what the Quran is saying. This is a correct interpretation now about Allah swearing by the pen. The rest is just their own. You know, the pen is made of light. If if the made is if the pen is made of light and there is ink. And its light is equal to the distance between the heaven and the earth. It is, it is, it it is with this pen that wise remembrance, i.e., the the, the 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 guarded tablet, was written, because Allah have a guard. So anyway, to make it simple, this is the earliest scars of Islam. This is a guy who lived with Muhammad in his time. He's his cousin. He spoke to Muhammad. He lived with Muhammad. Explain to us how the earth is carried on the top of a whale Why Muhammad in his time did not tell his cousin you are wrong Why the the companion of Muhammad at that time Let us say the elder one older than this guy who was with Muhammad said to him you are wrong It doesn't mean that That's stupid Nobody says anything. This is written in their books for the last 1400 years and not even one Muslim complain And not even one Muslim he says this is stupid. We should delete it It was fine. It was okay. It was smart What about Ibn Kathir? I am really interested to see what Ibn Kathir want to say about this Remember Ibn Kathir is a modern scholar comparing to the rest. He came long after this Ibn Abbas long long after Let us go to Ibn Kathir 68 1 go <clears throat> uh. Okay, hold on. Noon is like Allah saying Saad. Supposedly now he's explaining to you guys. Allah saying Qah. Qaf is a similar form, uh, similar to them, from the individual letter that's appear in the beginning of the Quranic chapters. This is, has been discussed, discussed at length previously. And there's no need to repeat it again. <laughs> you see, this guy is smarter. He skipped it. There's nowhere he discussed the noon before. He discussed the other letters. But to skip, being a stupid, he decided not to talk about it. This discussed this good way where he mentioned the noon before. He discussed the cough and noon. It's time to discuss for us noon. What noon is about? He skipped it. He decided not to talk about it. What is the first thing Allah created? The first thing Allah He created is the pen. Do you see it? Muhammad He said, The first thing Allah He created was the pen. And He said to, to, to it, Write. And the pen said, Oh my Lord, what I shall write? He said, write the degree and whatever will throw it eternity. What does that mean? But here we have a problem. According to the Quran, the first thing Allah created in chapter 41 is different from what Allah created in chapter number 79. In the hadith is different too. As an example, we showed you where Muhammad in the hadith, he said that the first thing Allah created, it was the clay. And then in Saturday, in Sunday, he created the mountains. Where is the pen? 
Anyone see the pen? There's no pen. Suddenly, Muhammad, they forgot about the pen. What happened to the pen? And why Allah have a tablet, by the way? You see, tablet is you, you know, like especially in the old days, uh, and now actually, you know, I mean, the the the, the format of uh, writing change. Now you use computer, you use a, a smartphone. It doesn't matter at the end of the day. It's just because you want to reserve things. Okay. Allah, He is God and He is Almighty. Do He have a short memory? Why He need a tablet? The Muslims, they cannot answer. Why Allah have a tablet? Why Ibn Kathir is saying that Allah, he created the pen? Why he need a pen? You know, the funny thing about the Muslim, they say, if Allah wants something to happen, he say, B is going to be. But obviously, that's not the case. Allah, in order to write, he have to create a tablet and he have to create a pen. <laughs> he did not say, be writing. And then everything happened. He said, uh, he didn't, he created the pen. Not he, he did not say be pen. He created the pen, and then he created a tablet, and then he told the pen write, and then the pen is talking pen. You see here we have a living pen. This pen is a is a different kind of pen. The, the kind it does talk to you. So Allah said to the pen write, and Allah, the pen said to Allah write what. Which means the pen is saying to Allah, are you stupid? Explain more. You know what I mean? Because when you say to me, you're right, and I say to you, right, what? It's mean, obviously, you did not deliver to me the order correctly. There's something missing. And who we, who, we can blame who here in, in this uh, situation? Allah or the pen? Obviously, Allah. Why Allah did not give him a full sentence saying write, etc., etc., etc. And then after he told him write, write what? Write the eternity. What eternity? How the pen he knew the eternity? Is the pen is the pen connected to the knowledge of God? Shouldn't shouldn't you say to me what I should write? You know what I mean, guys? Imagine this. You are you are Allah. And now you you created the pen and you told the pen this is this is a magical pen. You told Mr. Pen right. Now the pen is speaking to you. Like what? Okay. Okay. How okay? And then you say to him, write the thought, whatever we thought through eternity. How the pen will know that? How the pen will get the knowledge about that? He's a pen. Any Muslim can explain to us? Is this pen have a cable connected to the brain of Allah? So whatever Allah he think about, he knew and he write down. How the pen will do the job and why the pen is needed and why the tablet is needed. According to Muhammad, there is an angel. His name is Israfil. Let me see if I can find you the hadith in Arabic, in English. Israfil. Is an angel who is in charge you see here Muhammad is uh, uh, is counting for us the names of those angels the message of Allah said Allahumma Rabba Jabreel wa Mikael wa Rabba Israfil do you see Israfil? do you see Israfil? ok now who is Israfil? Who is this guy, Israfil? You see, Muhammad, because he's a thief, he is stealing names coming, some of it, from the Jewish books, not the Bible necessarily, from Jewish traditions. And Muhammad, he take whatever he hear from the Jews, he take it, he put it there. Now, who is Israfil? Israfil is an angel. He is in charge of guarding the tablet. Guarding what? The tablet. 
Let us see. If we can find the story. Mm, no, it's not here in English. Let us see the story of Israel, if you where we can find it. Israel. Oh, you know what? Let, us, let me try to search for an article written by Muslim scholars about this in English. Let us see. I will try to uh, search for, let us see how they write it in English here. Israfil, here we go, Israfil, okay. Yeah, I, I will try to find an article written about it in English so we can laugh a little bit about this madness. Okay, different, Israfil, different. Let us see. Still looking. Maybe we can find something. And then now I did not find any article in English. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Let us see this one. Okay, I found this book. This is an Islamic book. Uh, I'm going to use it just uh, just to show you. Uh, this is an Islamic book. It's called Hayat al Qulub, Value Number One. And this is the name of the author. Let me zoom in. All right. You see, I, I, I tried to look for English because I can find you tons of stories in Arabic, but uh, that will not help me much. All those stories is about Israfil. All of them, they are funny and all of them, they are crazy. But this is the one I want to talk about. The holy prophet that he was, uh, the in the champ uh, of the Almighty, the closest to him, and the divine tablet, Allah, which is made of ruby. Read carefully with me. Uh, hold on, hold on. Let me see. I wanna. Uh, 
the the problem I cannot post the link for you because this is a very long link in Google you know but maybe you can search I'm trying to look in the chat to see how it's coming from your side. Is it you can see guys all the text? Is the whole text showing or part of it? The holy prophet that was he was the uh, um, the prophet he was in almost in the bedroom of Allah supposedly. All right? And he was the closest to him. And the divine tablet, Lawah, which is made of ruby. You see, guys, Allah, his, his tablet is not like yours. His tablet is made of, of rubies. All right? Take a note, please. So the tablet of Allah, which is made of ruby, and placed between the two eyes of who? Of Israfil. Not, not between the two eyes of Allah. All right? So Allah, he made this ruby tablet and he wrote everything in it. But now he needs security. Security is very important. E even in Allah, Allah himself is afraid of hackers, thieves. Well, what if a Christian prince, he went there and he changed what is written in the tablet? Disaster. So Allah, he had to find a solution how he can protect the tablet. How he do that? He put it between the eyes of the angel Israfil. And the distance between the angel Israfil is even bigger than the distance between my eyebrows. Even, guys, the eyebrows between the angel Israfil is 500 years distance. His face is so big. Now, when the Almighty speak through revelation, the a head of the loh is inscribed with the words Israfil, look at the loh and read to us whatever is written in it. And by the way, this is different story here. In different story, it says no, he cannot see because Allah He place the the uh, uh, the the, the loh the, the board between his eyes. And how you can see if it's between your eyes, you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? This is why Allah He placed it there, placed it there so He cannot see. But here in the story, the Muslim they have different propaganda, different cartoon. And and read to us whatever is written on it. We uh, we convey the message. I think we need to make the text smaller. Hold on, I think there is something wrong here. Uh, hold on. Uh, yeah, I think this is better. Because there's part of the text is hiding. Yeah, that's better. So read to us whatever is written on it. We convey the message to the heaven. So who is the one who read? Israfil, he read to the other angels. Angels cannot read. Israfil is the one who read for them. And there is 90 curtains of light between him and Allah. If, 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 if. Their brightness dazzles the eyes, and it is impossible to describe their attributes. I am the closest of all creatures to Israel. Who is the one who is talking? Muhammad. Muhammad is the most close person to Israel. Okay. But there is a distance of a thousand years of travel between us. If, 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 if. Zawra asked Imam Jafar as Sadiq, how will the messenger of Allah came to know whatever was revealed to him was from Allah, not from Satan? This is a good question. How Muhammad knew that this is not from Satan? Look the answer. When Allah appoints someone as a prophet, okay, what happened? He bestows 
on him sincerity uh, uh, serenity and dignity therefore whatever he is revealed to him is as clear to him as if he were seeing it with his own eyes but as i know muhammad he never explained anything correctly muhammad himself he said there's a huge part of the quran nobody knows what it means save allah so what is clear to him when allah he said to muhammad read it three times why it was not clear to muhammad a guy he came to muhammad he squeezed him three times saying to him read was it clear to muhammad what the what allah he want to say no was it clear what he's trying to do to order him to do no Muhammad he keeps saying I cannot read and the angel squeeze him three times Continue uh, But I want to go I want to go back to Israel hold on because the story here is going to go uh, like uh, Let us go to Israel Israel More stories about Israel What's wrong with this? Site froze. Okay. The veil mentioned in this tradition is a spiritual, a veil that prevent Israel from comprehending the true essence of the Almighty, or it could mean that there that there is such a vast distance between Israel Israel and the divine throne from where the revelation or originated ah israel is far 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 he cannot you know okay and now here you see i told you in the forehead you see he's contradicting himself the same idiot he says to us israel he read for us what is written but look he in different page he said different read carefully And then he continues saying, where the revelation or, uh, uh, originated, okay, as mentioned in another tradition, that there is two extremes, extremes of a protected tablet. Allahul Mahfuz is one of them, is the divine, it is at the divine throne. So the, the Lawhul Mahfuz is at the divine throne guys is my red the is my red thing is covering the text for you or still you can read let me make it maybe i can make it thin hold on uh, there's no way to make it thin mm, interesting because i don't want uh, the the my pen to block Okay, let's try this one here. Try to make it very thin. And then he says, so there's two kinds of uh, uh, tablet. One of them is Allahul Mahfuz. The one of them, it's at the divine throne. And the second is at the th forehead of Israel. Do you see? I told you it's in the forehead. You see? Allah, he placed one tablet in the forehead of Israel, Israel, he cannot see it. Why he put it there so he cannot see it? Try it, try it. Put, put something in your forehead. How you can see it? You cannot. This is a very smart move of Allah. And you are telling me that Allah is not smart? How Allah noticed that this is the best place to put it there? And Israel, he cannot, he can protect it now because nobody can get close to it. Otherwise, Israel will see him and he will bite him. But in the same time, Israel, Oh, sorry, Israfil cannot see what is in the tablet. So when Allah He speaks through the revelation, the tablet touches the forehead of Israfil, and He look at the tablet, and whatever His eyes, whatever He sees, He relate to the Arsh angel. Hold on. How the tablet is in the forehead of him and he can still see it. Are you saying to me your Israfil have a frog eyes? How he can see it? Muslims, 
how Israfil can see the tablet which is placed in his forehead. In order to see it, Israfil, he have to have like a, like a, his eyes is connected to a tube, like some insect. His eyes move around. And not even even a spider he cannot do it. There is I, I saw before I forgot the name of those uh, creatures. Like their their eyes is like uh, you know they are they are coming out of their head. It's like insect, you know. How you can see that? All this garbage, and yet the Muslim they speak about science. Allah have a tablet. Allah He write all things in the tablet. Every uh, Allah He wrote in the tablet that Muhammad He have the right to have sex with his own daughter in law. Allah He wrote there. I mean, do you see how important that for Allah to write down? Because remember, everything in the Quran is written there too. Allah wrote in that tablet that Suleiman He spoke. He heard the ant speech. Allah he wrote in the tablet that Suleiman wives they have sex with the devil. Hmm? Allah he wrote in the tablet that when you have sex, shaitan will round himself around your penis if you don't say the name of Allah before you have sex. Shaitan will enter your anus, shaitan will take hair from your anus, shaitan will sleep in your nose. Do you see how much is top secret the information in that tablet? Now Hold on. If that tablet contained the Quran, and this is a top secret, why we have the Quran? And why Allah is revealing His security plan to the hackers? I mean, why you are saying to them where you place the tablet, who is guarding it, his name is Israfil, his distance is etc., his big is etc., his face look like etc. Why you are telling them? And Allah in the heaven is worried that somebody will steal the tablet. Who is the one who will steal it? Is that the American or maybe the Russian spaceship? Because remember, the Quran said that if anyone try, try even to think to leave the zone of the earth, which is proving the Quran to be false again, Allah will shoot him in his ass with a star. As long as we are talking about science, let us go there. You see the Muslim, like I saw in the in the website there, they speak about uh, the atmosphere, right? If you go back in the this one, no, not this one. Hold on, which one? Is that the one? Mountains and buried the cloud orbits. No, not this one. Hold on. I'm trying to find which website they spoke about the atmosphere. Um, actually, we can search for it, you know. Hold on, let me find it. You see, all those topics are connected, and all of them they will get uh, the Abdul busted with their lies. Atmosphere in the Quran. <clears throat> Here we go. The Quran mentioned the atmosphere. All right. Those whom Allah He wants to guide, He spans their chest to Islam, and those He wants to leave astray. This is a false translation, by the way. It doesn't say leave astray. It says the one who He wants to deceive liars. He makes their chest tight and constructed as if they were ascending to the sky. Okay. 
How could illiterate? This is not the verse I'm looking for, but let us answer this one as long as we open it. How could the illiterate man who lived 1400 years ago knows that we cannot breathe with increase of institute? This, uh, what, 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 what? people they go to mountains all the time, and Muhammad he live in mountains area. You stupid! Isn't you Muslims who say that Muhammad he live in a cave in the mountain of Hara, in the cave of Hara? So he go every day to the mountain. So is it like hard to know that when you go up, uh, up upstairs, it's 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 a hard work to do? Look look how they try to make it a miracle, but there is but still here there's a mistake. There is a mistake. When you go in the space up up, your chest is not getting narrow. The Quran is saying that your chest is getting narrow. That's false. The more you go up in the mountains or high, your chest space increase for a very simple reason. The pressure is less. This is why if you go and look at people who live in high mountains, you will see that they have wide chest. Why? Because they need more oxygen. There is less pressure and they need to breathe more oxygen because they have less oxygen than someone lived down in the valley. Especially if the mountain is extremely high. Actually, if you go in a very, very extreme high mountains, you are risking to die from unable to be in breathing correctly. But not because not because your chest is getting narrow. It is because of the oxygen and your chest is expanding. Not getting narrow. So now they make this as a miracle. Some very something very simple. Now look here. And we made the sky a protection shield that turn away from its sign. Is it what this verse is saying? Who is the Muslim on a bit that this is a big fat lie? The verse doesn't say that. Who wanna who who wanna who wanna debate me about this? Protective shield. Shield from what? The sky is a protective shield. Hmm. The verse he's talking about, and you, you know, by the way, when the Muslim they try to make a miracle, why they cut a verse? Isn't them who says to read the verse before it and the verse before after it so he can understand? Isn't it them who always says you are taking things of context? How come now they are just quoting little verse for us and they don't give us what is before it, what is after it? Let us go and see in the Quran what it says, and so we can laugh more. I've been in English instead of Arabic. وَجَعَلْنَا السَّمَاءَ Chapter 21, verse number 32. Okay, what does chapter is saying? وَجَعَلْنَا السَّمَاءَ سَقْفًا مَحْفُوظًا We made the sky protected. But from who? The Muslims, when they speak about the atmosphere, the atmosphere work as the following. This is the earth. Let us make an earth. This is the earth. And then around the earth, we will make a different color. We have, let us say, the atmosphere is here. So if there is something, try to go through. First, it have to go through the atmosphere. What the Quran is speaking about is the opposite. In the Quran, the earth first is a flat. And we proved that to you in many places already. Today. So we have a flat earth. And then we have a mountain. It's called the mountain of Qaf, if you remember. It is an azure mountain surrounding the earth. 
and the color of it is a blue oh we have to make it uh, hold on it's a blue mountain surrounding all the earth and then in the top of it we have a doom this is the sky and Allah is saying that we made the sky protected roof but from going from in to out not from out to in the atmosphere things try to go through the earth to the earth what the Quran is speaking about that you cannot get out not get in you see how they lie the Quran is saying you cannot get out in this direction you stay in the earth how we prove that let us get the Abdul busted again as usual if we go in the Quran we will find the following verses <clears throat> Uh, you see the Muslims they don't want to show you what the Quran is saying Ya ma'ashara al-jinna wal-ins إن استطعتم أن تنفذوا من أقطار السماوات والأرض فنفذوا لا تنفذون إلا بسلطان. Chapter fifty five verse number thirty. Translation. O ye assembly of the jinn and mankind, you cannot pass beyond the zone of the heaven and the earth. However, if you can pass, pass ye. But you cannot do that if I don't give you authority. And Allah. The Quran and the Muslim explain that the authority only given to people who they are prophets of God, like Isa and Muhammad, who went to heaven, and no one else can go. This is why Allah is challenging anyone to go to heaven. And you know, because we don't want people to say we are making things up, let us see the interpretation for the verse from the Muslims, chapter 55, verse number 33. 55. 33 Oh company of the jinns means if you have power if you are able to retreat all to break free from the regions the extreme uh, 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 to the heaven of the earth uh, and the, from the raw of the angels and penetrate them then break free flee you will never penetrate them you will never so what the quran is saying that a human being neither genie they can go out of the earth and this is a proven to be false because a human being already went to the sky and out of the space not only flying in the airplane they went out of the space out of the zone of the earth so here the quran saying you cannot do that if you don't like Ibn Abbas, by the way, we can change you, you because customers come first. We can go to a Jalalain. We can go to Ibn Kathir, who try to be always smart, smart in the, the, the out in smart the Muslims. Uh, oh, company of the jinn, if you are able to uh, through to exit from the uh, confines of the region of the heaven and the earth, then pass through a commandment challenge to them to what they are incapable of doing. You cannot do that unless Allah He allowed you, and Allah He allowed only who? The prophets and the angels to do that. Now, so the atmosphere the Muslim trying to speak of, which is in this article, is a false interpretation for the verse. What about we read this article, this verse? We take it here, chapter twenty-one, verse number thirty-two, and see what it's the meaning in the according to the scholars of Islam. Does it mean what they are saying? Let us see. Chapter 21, verse number 32. 21. And you will see right away how what they say is absolutely false. And we made the heaven a roof for the earth, functioning like a roof of a house, preserving from collapsing. And yet, 
of a sign therefore namely a sign for those in heaven such as the Sun etc okay this is a Jalalain preventing what the space from collapsing this is not what the roof does we have made the sky a roof for the earth with healed from them such that does not fall it's also say it's mean it's protecting it from Satan by the stars yet they ie the people of Mecca they turn away okay how Allah protect the the, the uh, when Allah he made the sky he protected roof from the Satan what does that mean in different verse Muhammad he said that when shaitan he tried to leave the zone of the earth Allah shoot him by a star in his ass please if there's a Muslim he don't agree with me he shoot him in the ass you let me let me know where exactly if it is not in the ass وَلَقَدْ زَيَّنَّا السَّمَاءَ الدُّنْيَا بِمَصَابِيحَ وَجَعَلْنَاهَ رُجُومًا لِلشَّيَاطِينَ Translation And verily we have beautified the word heavens with lamps By the way, this is not true It's not the word heaven. It's the lowest heaven and this is what the Muslim is speaking about the atmosphere This the lamps is in the atmosphere according to Islam <laughs> So we beautified the lowest heaven with lamps you can change the translation if you don't like it you know all of them they lie but we can you know just for the sake of uh, education you see the lower heaven and we adorn this lower heaven with lamps so only in the lower heaven there is lamps what the job of those lamps those lamp those lamps have a job the lamps are the stars and we have made those these missiles for shaitans and we have prepared for them Adjustment of burning. So what Allah he do what so what this is atmosphere in Islam is about It's not what the Muslim say is that if you try if if you know like uh, Allah protected the earth from failing rocks. This is not what it says if shaitan try to go and to spy At Allah or to steal from a lawful mahfuz Allah will shoot them with Stars not shooting stars. This is the stupid Muhammad. He think that the shooting stars are stars When we say that we are talking we're not talking about the the the, the, uh, the, the the meteor This is a lamps as you see those are lamps. So Muhammad he think Explain what he see as a Bedouin in the desert What is those things is falling down? What is those things? Muhammad he came with the idea, or it was a legend in that in his time that because Shaitan he try to spy at Allah, Allah he shoot them in their ass by lamps. So they cannot go and spy at Allah. How we can prove that? Not only this is can be found in the interpretation. This is can be found in the Quran. Do we have any Muslim here? Want to say no? Let us go to the front verse. Allah protected the sky from what you see we are answering this is scam here about Allah protecting the sky because different verse Allah tell us he is protecting the sky from who you see how they lie to us Allah protecting the sky from the say from from the rocks Allah protecting the sky from fading rocks from meteor what Allah protecting the sky that will be answered in the Quran itself if we go in the Quran we will find this وَحَفَظْنَاهَا مِنْ كُلِّ شَيْطَانٍ رَجِيمٍ Translation 
15 chapter 15 verse number 16 and 17 it is we who have set out zodiacal sign in the heaven really zodiacal sign okay and made them fair seeming to all beholders and we have guarded them from every cursed devil by the way this is a false translation but it make it make the, it does the job the quran confirmed that allah protecting the heaven from the devil not the opposite the devil is in the earth the devil he live in the earth remember the quran says in different verse allah he said to adam and eve and to shaitan get down from it and we certainly have made it a stronghold in the heaven and we had me we have made it fair seeming for be the beholder and we guarded what guarded what the sky the heaven against every cursed shaitan if there is a shaitan is not cursed no all shaitan is cursed so the guardian of the sky is not what the muslim they try to say to us it's about atmosphere it's about shaitan he cannot get out what else how we can prove that shaitan here the purpose as we say that the shaitan trying to, to spy at allah you see how how something stupid and silly muslim they make it a miracle and science if we go in the quran we will find the following all this story about protecting the sky is about allah he is having his own security because shaitan he tried to spy at him they work for the kgb and the cia chapter 15 15 verse number 18 what this is saying read carefully the same chapter actually we're reading from the same chapter it's it's explain itself but we can read more than translation. So we guard it against every cursed shaitan. And but he who still a hearing, so there follow him a visible flame. So Muhammad the idiot, he explained the meteor we see in the sky in his scientific discovery that this is must be a shaitan because Allah he protected the heaven, he cannot get in. But there's maybe shaitan he tried to spy so he go there and when he go there he might hear something trying to spy at allah however don't worry be happy allah will shoot him with the star immediately do you see it in the article they made it about atmosphere how 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 muhammad illiterate man he knew about this how could an illiterate man who lived 1400 years ago known about cannot breathe increase attitude how muhammad knows about the protected atmosphere you see how they lie what is the the story is totally different you cannot escape allah mighty on earth or in the sky and you have no protector and no savior beside Allah. But this is about shooting this the, the, the ass of the devil. <laughs> How could illiterate man who lived 1400 years ago know that man will reach the sky? This is about reaching the sky. This verse is about reaching the sky. It says the opposite. You cannot escape. Yeah, do you see the stupidity? How this verse saying, Allah saying that you will reach the sky. He says you cannot escape. <laughs> we, we are not done. We are not done. Let us see. There's one is more funny. Look at this one. We mentioned this actually, I think we mentioned this one, right? 
that we decorated the lowest heaven so if this is about the the atmosphere too here we have an another thing to get the muslim busted with because it says the lowest heaven the lower heaven is the stars in the lower heaven in in the is, is it in the atmosphere according to the quran there is only stars in the atmosphere according to muslims because if this is the atmosphere huh if this is the atmosphere, the lower heaven in Islam is the atmosphere then. Because Allah is saying that the lowest heaven, there's no other heaven for him. This is the lower heaven. After that, the earth. Guys, you know what I'm saying? What is the lower heaven? The lower heaven is, you, from your head is on and up. This is heaven. The Quran described that the birds, why the birds are not, uh, why the birds, they don't fail down. According to the science of the Quran, any Muslim knows why? It's in the heaven. So this is already the heaven. The bird is in the heaven, and the bird will not fail down. Is not falling down because simply Allah is holding the bird from failing. Is that true, guys? Uh, Muslims, Abdul. Alam <laughs> yaro. الطير مسخرات في الجو السماء وما يمسكهن إلا الله. Let us see what as sama translated. It's you know the word sama is appear in the Quran. The Muslim translated as heaven. Let us see, chapter sixty nine, verse number seventeen seventy nine. Hmm. Don't do they not look at the birds? Has poised. In the midst of the sky, nothing hold them up but the power of Allah? Really? So the birds are not falling down because Allah is holding them? Is that right? I mean, this is obviously is a science. Okay, question. Then based on this, what is holding the American F-16 from falling down? Is that Allah? What is holding the Israeli F-16 from falling down? Is that Allah? Do you see the science? This is all the science. Allah explaining to us how he is holding the birds from falling down. Okay, well, there's many things we need to explain now. How the satellite of the CIA spying at everybody in the world including me and you is in the sky now they are held by allah i mean obviously this is a true science who can i mean who can argue about this i mean it's very clear why? Oh, here we go. There's an airplane flying in the sky here in my area. Who is holding it? Obviously, Allah. Allah hold the bird. Who is going to hold the airplane? It's Allah. I mean, this is very, I mean, simple. You see, and, and the, it's really funny and very stupid. They try to make a miracle out of something stupid. How, how the pro, how, how a literate man he knew that we will go to the sky. Where it says that chapter 29, verse number 22. Let's see that. Maybe the translation says that. Maybe the interpretation chapter 29, verse 22, predicting that we will go to the space. Uh, is that right? Okay, I will go 29, 22. 29, 22. Let us see if this is what it meant. Let us see what the liar. And you will never be able to ward him, your Lord, and prevent him from catching up with you on earth or in heaven. Were you to be in it, in other words, you cannot uh, elude him. Why? Because different verse saying, you human and you genie, you cannot leave the zone of the earth because if you try, Allah will show you. He challenge you, you cannot do that. <laughs> 
You cannot escape. This is not about predicting that you will go out of heaven. It says you cannot predict. You cannot protect yourself from me because you cannot escape. Different interpretation. We give we give chance for all Muslims to defend. You cannot, O oh people of Mecca, escape his torment in the earth from the people of the earth or the sky from the deliverer of the sky. Ah, here is a different story. So now there's dealers of the sky, there's people who live in the sky, and there's people who live in earth. Nobody escape Allah because Allah will kill all the angels anyway. At the end of the time, according to Islam, Allah will kill all the angels. Uh, as an example, Allah at the end of the time, He will bring the angel of death and He will slaughter him. You believe it? He will bring the angel of death and He will kill him. You can't escape that. That's it. So look how they try to make something very stupid, very silly, try to make it appear at is as if it is scientific discovery. We can keep going and going, but maybe we better leave something for tomorrow. The Christian Bible says, it's rain because someone spills the water jars of heaven. Job. <laughs> Hail and snow have their in warehouses <laughs> guys when i say muslims they always help me to show how stupid islam is you don't believe it if we go right now to job 37 38 37 let us do that hold on Job, liars, liars will end in fire. Who is who has wisdom to count the cloud? Who can tip over water jar of heaven? This is nothing have to do with the rain and how Allah or how God created the rain. This is a guy is speaking about you know meditate like meditation about how amazing God is, which means his wisdom is always a flooding. It's not about, you know, uh, rain and how God he made the rain. Why Muslims they lie? Where it says there that this is how he made the rain? Where? This is a metaphorical statement about the wisdom of God. It have it's endless. It's like you have a jar full of water. And the water keep coming. This is not about rain. And then in the article they said, not like the the hail and the snow there was in warehouse. Let us go to thirty, the, the same chapter, third, uh, uh, 22, 23 and love, because I will find you what the Muslims are saying in their Quran, not in our Bible. Same chapter, twenty two, twenty three. Let us go there. Okay. <laughs> okay have you entered the store house of the snow or seen the storehouse of hail let us open the verses and see together and love together at this and, and how the muslim they try to fabricate stories hold on Let's see the chapter and love together at the fabrication of the Muslims. All of this, all of this is meditation. Nothing here is declaring that God, he said, I do this and I do that. This person, this is a man, is wondering how God, he created everything, how amazing he is. You can read, actually, you know what? Let us play a little bit of it. And I can hit Job 38. Mighty. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? Hmm. Gird up now thy loins like a man, for I will demand of thee and answer thou me. Where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare, 
if thou hast understanding? Who hath laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest? Or who hath stretched the line upon it? Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened? Or who laid the cornerstone thereof? When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy? Or who shut up the sea with doors when it brake forth, as if it had issued out of the womb? When I made the cloud the garment thereof, and thick darkness a swaddling ban for it, and break up for it my decreed place, and set bars and doors, and said, Hitherto shalt thou come, but no further, and here shall thy proud waves be stayed. Hast thou commanded the morning since thy days, and caused the day spring to know his place, that it might take hold of the ends of the earth, that the wicked might be shaken out of it? It is turned as clay to the seal, and they stand as a garment, and from the wicked their light is withholden, and the high arm shall be broken. Hast thou entered into the springs of the sea, or hast thou walked in the search of the depth? Have the gates of death been opened unto thee? Or hast thou seen the doors of the shadow of death? Hast thou perceived the breadth of the earth? Declare, if thou knowest it all. Where is the way where light dwelleth? And as for darkness, where is the place thereof, that thou shouldst take it to the bound thereof, and that thou shouldst know the paths to the house thereof? Knowest thou it because thou wast then born, or because the number of thy days is great? Hast thou entered into the treasures of the snow? Or hast thou seen the treasures of the hail which I have reserved against the time of trouble, against the day of battle and war? Okay. Where, is, what, well, hold on. where is here the warehouse where God, he sent it from heaven? This is what it says? What, what it says here that everything is coming is from God. The snow, the rain, the, the, the darkness, the light, everything we have. Is simply is a gift to us. It can be bad. It can be good. It you know who is the one who created all those things? It's God. Who is the one who made the rain? Who is the one who made the snow? Who is the one who who, who caused the rain to come on the earth? But there is nowhere, like here is an example. He, they said that God he created it from a jar, right? Here, who caused to cause the rain on earth, where no man is. Uh, in etc. So all of this is a metaphorical mean about what God he did the, the amazing power of God, but there is nothing here about science This is this man meditating with God and he is receiving the answer that who is the glory or who is the who can be glorified more than this Lord? Who is the one who did all of this? However as long as the Muslim this says that the Bible speak about there is a warehouse of a snow which it doesn't say that and we are playing the verse in front of you Nowhere it says that God he have a warehouse where he stores snow and Then he take from the warehouse and he send it to us. It doesn't say that That is in the Quran Read carefully hail and the snow Their own warehouses so the Muslims now they admit that anyone believe in this is a stupid they cannot escape it no more. Let us go and see the Quran. Because this is in the Quran, not in the Bible. Chapter 24, verse number 43. You see here the Muslims they try to cover the shame of the Quran the stupidity look what they say and He sent down from the sky hail like mountains. It doesn't say like mountains Or they are or like this guy is trying to fix it now so trying to cover his ass literally or there are in heaven Mountains of hail where he sends down hail. This is what it says actually This is what it says It is the Quran who says that in the heaven there's mountains of hail and Allah break from it and he throw it in us 
how we can prove that this is the meaning let us go and see the scholars you see we don't we don't give a meaning for the bible as the muslim they do for our own i mean the muslim he, he will give you a verse from the bible says look what the bible says and he give it his own interpretation in order to understand what the bible says learn the interpretation of the christians for their book because at the end of the day that's what we believe in order to understand what the quran seen don't give the interpretation don't take the interpretation from a christian prince read the interpretation of the muslim scholars not those scammers these days who try to fabricate meaning does not exist go to the original scholars of islam who they were as scholars of islam for the last 1200 years not to someone his name is zakir naik who do not even know how to read his, the name of his prophet in arabic so let's go and see what the scholars they say about this chapter 24 verse number 43 whatever the scholars they say i accept it is that fair don't take the meaning because he may be christian prince is lying maybe he got it wrong in arabic maybe he don't understand arabic very well maybe all options is possible 24 43 Read carefully, Abdul, with me. Then he bring the cloud together, etc., 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 etc. Okay, and then he says, he sent down from the heaven mountains where is hail. Do you see it, guys? This is the true meaning. He said, he sent down hail from mountains in heaven. Who is the one who have a warehouse for a snow? Abdul. That is us or you? We went to Job 38, 37. We went to Job 38, 22, 23. And we found that whatever you said there about that is a lie. But we went to the Quran. And we found that this is in your book. In chapter 24, verse number 43. It's your God who is saying to us that there is a warehouse of snow, which is mountains. And then Allah, he break from those mountains hail. And he submit the hail in the one he dislike. Do you see it? Do you see how they fabricate? They try, they, 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 they make fun of you, but what they are making fun of is not in our book. It's in their book. How Muhammad 1400 years ago knows that there's mountain of hail in heaven? How he knew that? This is Quran. This is not a hadith. Quran saying that. You see, if you open the Quran in Arabic, it says it clearly. From, min, min jibal in fiha, from mountains in it. All the false translation try to protect that part, saying from mount from, from a cloud like it doesn't say cloud. What a cloud? Cloud in the beginning here in the part. Then after that it says. This is a different part. You see, in Arabic, the letter wa, wa in Arabic is equal to end. Wa is equal to end. And you say end when you start a new sentence additional to the first one. You, you want to continue. Same as in English. You know? Exactly the same as in English. Wa and end. So, then... And we send it from the sky, from, from mountains in it. He sent what? Hail. And because we are not a fraud, the same as those who try to make the Quran, a book of science, we don't give interpretation for the verse up to our ourselves. We go and see what the scholars they say. What about we go and see Ibn Kathir? Ibn Kathir is a modern scientist, or let's say, scholar. He should be smarter. Maybe Ibn Kathir will give us, will protect Allah from being busted. Should we go and see what Ibn Kathir guy is saying? Let us go. What we will lose? Ibn Kathir, chapter 24, verse number 43. Maybe Ibn Kathir can do better. When I say Ibn Kathir is smarter because Ibn Kathir, 
he was living in Syria and he he was associating with this with the smart Syrian people who they are the Christians so he learned that to be dumb and he always tried to, to defend the Quran from the stupid things in it but let us see Look like we got this. Oh, where is that? Huh. Hold on. Let us see what Ibn Kathir is saying. Read carefully. He sent down from the sky, from mountain in it, of Minik. <laughs> Do you see it? Read carefully. From mountains in it, none of the none none of the translation they say the translation correctly. From mountains in it means there is there are mountains of hail in the sky from which Allah sent down ice, and now this is the the, the moderate smart ass Ibn Kathir. You see, the more the Muslims get close to our time, the more they start trying to fix the stupidity of the Quran. So they try to deny it. doesn't mean that, you know. The more they are close to Muhammad, the more the Quran is stupid. The more it's original. The Quran today, meaning, according to Muslims, as you see, is far away from what the Quran is saying. This guy, they are saying that this is in the book of Job, that Quran, the, the, the book of Job saying that uh, God, he have a story, warehouse of, uh, of snow. This is gonna be in the Quran. There's no way, because the one who wrote the articles is an idiot. As you see, this is in your book. This is not in my book, Abdul. It is in your book. What kind of God this God is? Who think that there is mountains of eyes there? And then Allah He break from it and He send it down. Do you see it? What about the chapter 13, verse number 13? As long as we are talking about hail and rain. Chapter 13, verse number 13, stating that Mr. Thunderbolt is an angel of Allah. Is that right? And Arad, the thunder, glorify Allah. Okay, how the thunder glorify Allah? Let us see how is that. All right. Uh, this guy he didn't talk about it. Let us go to different interpretation. He did not mention. I didn't see where he. Ah, guys, look what the thunder he says. Look what the thunder he said. This is Ibn Kathir. Abdullah narrated from the, his father that the messenger of Allah used to say upon hearing the thunder and the thunderbolt, uh, Allah don't kill us by your anger and, and don't destroy us by your tor torture. All right. This is each time he hear the thunder. Okay. All the praise to him, a rad, thunder, glorify and praises. And, the, and so do the angels. Because of his awi, he would say, this is a stern warning for the people of the earth. All right. But still here, he did not really give. Let's go to different interpretation. Hold on. I don't trust the English one anyway. You know, they, they lie in the translation. But let us see, 1313, because... 13 13 it says it clearly that the thunder is an angel read carefully the thunder hemmed with his praise by his command it is an angel who is it an angel the thunder it is an angel who praise allah uh, 
and Allah he hurt with it whoever he will I can take that as a metaphorical no problem with me you know that is God can kill somebody by thunder why not I mean he can but this is not the issue the Muslims they believe that the thunder is an angel the Sirah Jalalain read carefully and the thunder is an angel who is in charge of the cloud so now we know who is in charge of the cloud in case you do not know it's an angel his name is mr thunder i think we have enough for today guys uh tomorrow i don't do live broadcast so we will do it maybe monday i want to say thank you for being with us i hope today we cover many issues and we answer the muslims in many places and sadly i have my skype open and not even a single muslim call because obviously they knew that this topic they cannot refute they knew all of them that the science of the Quran is nothing but a fraud Quran is a book of science by the way I'm not claiming as a Christian that my book as a Bible is the book of science because it's not meant to be it does not have to this is a book about God about you know about believing in God about how to live your life about even how to prepare for death it is a spiritual book have nothing to do with science but because the Muslims they have nothing to prove their prophet as a prophet he have no miracles except having sex with the children's if this is a miracle even when he went to the seven heaven seven eleven heaven in top of a flying mule nobody saw him not even his wife Muhammad he have no witnesses for anything So they have to find a way the world today into science teenage people into science young ones into science so what we can do let us manipulate the Quran and make it fit with science and that will make many fool convert to this cult science in the Quran this is the most stupid book ever And if you want to help your children's, if somebody tried to fool your children's with science and the Quran, feel free. You can go to Amazon.com and you can get my books there. In my books, I give you all the reference. I give you all the, the, the proofs where nobody can refute. All of it is coming from Islamic source. As you see, I don't show you a verse and say how this is how I explain it. I don't. I never did so. I don't explain the Quran up to my mind. I, I give you what the Muslim believe about the Quran the true Muslims the scars of Islam the ones who were not ashamed of the stupidity of Muhammad for centuries the Muslims today because they notice that this is stupid they try to decide to deny it even what their prophet said they try to get rid of it you see when Muhammad he said to his uh, friend where the sun goes what the Muslim will say about Muhammad saying that where the sun goes and Muhammad explained that the sun goes every day from point A to point B to sleep under the throne of Allah. How the Muslims they can escape this? <coughs> this is in Sahih Muslim. This is in Sahih Bukhari. And those are the most legitimate books in Islam. What they will say? They will say the Prophet is stupid. The only way for them to deny it is to deny the whole book. And trust me, they will not hesitate to deny the whole book. This little prophet saying that. This is not a Christian prince. This is not Zachar Naik. This is not Didat from like the war today. And this is not even a scars from the old days. This is Muhammad himself explaining the movement of the sun. It is the sun who goes every day from point A to point B. This is why it disappeared. It is the sun who goes every sunset to prostrate itself under the throne of Allah and then Allah in the morning she asked Allah to return back and Allah he allowed her to come back and even Muhammad he quoted verses from the Quran to explain that chapter 36 verse number 38 he is explaining here this is one of the unique verses Muhammad explaining usually he don't explain here he's trying to be a smart ass and the more Muhammad he talked the more he make poo poo so now Muhammad the smart ass person he decided to explain so suddenly he come to us with the amazing science what the Muslims will say Muhammad he did not understand the Quran of Allah 
they will say that Zakir Naik who came uh, 1500 years after Muhammad he understand the Quran better than Muhammad what they will say they make fun of the Bible that the Bible says that God created the Sun in Wednesday ha ah, ah, ha ah, did that he was doing that did that you remember but did that was debating people who do not know Islam he always the Muslim always debate someone he is ignorant about Islam just to assault you and you have no choice to defend yourself from their books because even if you answer them from your books they will say we don't believe in it anyway you're just wasting your time but isn't it Muhammad who said that Allah created the Sun in Wednesday isn't it so did that when he was debating on the stage making fun of the Bible saying hey your God said that he created that but my God said in the book of Genesis that he said let be light and there was light so the first thing he created was light there is light already but in your religion there is no light the first thing Allah he created was the clay and then and that was Saturday the week start for Allah in Saturday and then he created the mountains and by the way why Allah is working in Saturday the Allah he made the Jews pigs and monkeys for working in Saturday now he himself is working in Saturday and he created the mountains in Sunday and he created the trees in Monday and he created the entire labor in Tuesday and then he created the light on Wednesday so the first light was created in Islam is in Wednesday but in my Bible it says the first thing God he said let be light there was light and then he called the light day and he called the night the dark call it night so they make fun of your book because they knew that you do not know their books where you can get them busted you need to remember always that Muhammad is a big thief he is a thief he have nothing Islam is not a religion exist by itself Islam is a collection of theft it's like somebody go into the yard of somebody and from that yard who collect whatever he can collect and then he tried to put it together so in Islam you will find the cult it's called Nasara which is a group of the Jews who decide to follow Jesus as a master and as a rabbi And Muhammad is confused between them and the different kind of a Christianity so he called all the Christian Nasara because he never met any except the Nasara Muhammad is confused between the stories of the Jews and the legion of the Jews Muhammad is confused between himself who is he and what he want to be this is why in the beginning he went to fast like the Jews then he changed he went to fast like the Arab then he changed and he went to fast like the, the Christians and then he changed he went to fast like the, the Sabian so he decided to come with Ramadan he was confused about the prayer direction he went to pray he was praying trying to convince the Jews that he is a Jew like them so he was praying in the, toward Jerusalem praying toward the temple of Jerusalem the temple of Suleiman this is the truth the Muslim they said to you Aqsa and the Aqsa Mosque this is this the Muhammad is a praying as the Jews they pray for he's trying to convince them that he is a Jew but when he get to the point he knew that the Jews will never believe in him Muhammad he said in the hadith if ten Jews only believe in me all the Jews will believe he could not make ten Jewish people believe in him so Muhammad was a failure person his success or his success was by the sword and actually even by the sword in his time he was not too much successful the spread of Islam happened after his death 
by the children of Muawiyah for he was a criminal. He loved money. He wanted to bring slaves from everywhere, money, women for sex from everywhere. Islam did not spread really much in the time of Muhammad. Muhammad did not take Jerusalem in his time. Muhammad did not take Syria in his time. Muhammad did not conquer Egypt. He did not conquer anything. Muhammad was just in the Arabian Peninsula in a small place. And right away when Muhammad he died, we know that there is, you can go and search right now for something. It's called the War of Apostate. What is the War of Apostate? This is additional proof of the failure of Muhammad to convince people that he's a prophet. Nobody believe in him. Why people, they want to go apostate in the day Muhammad he die? Because simply they've been forced to convert to Islam. Nobody is convinced. It's like Hitler. He forced everybody to be a fascist Nazi. And then Hitler died. In the same day Hitler he died, everybody decide not to believe in the fascism. This is exactly what Islam is about. So when the same day Muhammad died, People start not want to be Muslims. So you can go right now and search for the war of Hapu state. And you will find that the Muslims, in order to make people stay Muslims, they have to go after them in war and kill them. Those are Muslims already. But the day Muhammad he die, they decide to stop following Islam. And that is a clear proof that Islam was not a choice. Islam was something they've been forced to. And until today, if a person, have you ever heard of a country? All people there, they have one religion. You might say to me, the Vatican. The Vatican, my friend, is not a country for citizens. It's a country for monks. So it's very normal. We are talking about a country, have women, children, men who live there, live what kind of jobs. The whole country, Saudi Arabia, have one religion. There's no Saudi is allowed to be anything except a Muslim. Have you ever heard of a country have no a single atheist? Why? Because Islam is a terrorism. Give people freedom and you will see how many people they want to be atheists. Forget about being Christian. How, have you ever heard of a country have no gays and lesbians? When Ahmed Najat he came and he made a speech in the United Nations, he said, in my country, we don't have gays and lesbians. <laughs> a country of 80 or 90 million have no single gay or lesbian. Yeah, because if anyone dare to say I am, you will kill him. Islam is a Islam, Islam stays exist because of terrifying. The second you give a freedom, the Muslims are not Muslims no more. They don't want Islam. Who is fighting Islam right now in Algeria? The Muslims. They don't want Sharia law. There's a war happening for the last 20 years. People do not know about it. More than a million and a half Algerian get killed in Algeria. Why? Because the Islamists, they want to establish Sharia law. The rest of the population, they don't want Sharia law. More than a million and a half get killed in Algeria alone. Who don't want Sharia law in Syria? Who don't want Sharia law in Egypt? Who don't want Sharia law in Tunisia? Who? Muslims. This is the truth. This is the fact. What is the Islamic country practicing Sharia law? You will say to me, Saudi Arabia. Even Saudi Arabia is not practicing Sharia law in, in, in full. Nobody pays jizya in Saudi Arabia. Nobody. And jizya is one of the most important part of Sharia law. Having American airspace in Saudi Arabia, in Qatar, in Emirat, in Bahrain is a breaking of Sharia law. Because you cannot do that. The Quran says whoever take them as a friend, he is one of them. Whoever take them as a friend, he is one of them. Is a kafir. So Muslims, they don't want Sharia Allah. And you tell me why. If Allah is the perfect God, 
and his law is the perfect law. So why the Muslims don't want Sharia law? Who is the one fighting ISIS right now in Syria? It is the Muslims. What kind of Muslims? The Muslims who don't want Sharia law, which means the Muslims who don't want to be Muslims. As simple as that. The Muslims who want to go and have uh, have a life like everybody, who want to listen to music, Muhammad forbid the music. Find me one Islamic country, one Muslim he don't drive his car and don't listen to songs. Find me one Muslim he don't have a TV. Find me one Muslim he don't watch porn. Porn is Islam is allowed, big deal, but in the legal way. Even the Quran says it's lawful for you to have prostitute. It's not forbidden in Islam to have a prostitute or even to work as a prostitute. But if the girl she agree, you're a slave girl. However, if you force her, Allah will not be upset from you. Is that correct? This is the verse in front of you, chapter 24, verse number 33. Force not, force not your maids into prostitution when they desire a chest. When, they, when, when there is a condition, if they desire chest, don't force them. But if they desire to work as a prostitute, no problem. And if you force them, it's okay. Allah is all for, forgiving, merciful. There is no place in the Quran that says prostitution is haram. It is the opposite, as you see. It is legal, it's lawful, it is allowed. And the Muslims, through history and centuries, they become, number one business for them is a prostitution. They bring slaves from everywhere, slaves even from their own cousins, because they go in war with each other, and they slave the other cousin, family, and then they force the, the women of those cousins into slavery, into sex. If the woman, she is pretty, she is good-looking, she is young, here we go. We got a job for you. This is Islam. But you have to do it in the right way. In Islam, it's not allowed to do adultery, but you can rent a woman for muta. They call it marriage. You go to a woman, you say to her, "You wanna? I want to sleep with you for five minutes. How much you charge me? She agree, you agree. Here we go. She's your wife. She's your wife legally for five minutes. So they call this a marriage, but the fact she is not a marriage, she's not a wife. This is just for sex, prostitution. Islam presents prostitution in many faces, but they give them different names. All what Muhammad did, he did, and the Muslims they did, they changed the names of the ugly stuff they do. So when they attack your country, they don't call it occupation, they call it fatah. When they kidnap your wife, they don't say, oh, we stole his wife from him, and we rape his wife, no. He says Allah made it lawful for us to take your property and your family from you. You are not protected by Allah. You are it's lawful for us. They say we are against thief and theft. Even even the Quran speak about cutting the hands of the thief. But it's okay to steal the land, the money of somebody is not under the protection of Allah. So theft is haram if you steal from a Muslim, someone protected by Allah. Theft is okay. If he is not protected, you, you don't have a protection from Allah, do you? Everything in Islam have two faces. You see, the Muslims, they, they uh, like Obama, he was quoting a verse from the Quran, says, it's written for you that if someone of you uh, uh, killed an innocent man as if he killed all mankind, but they will not tell you that this is about killing a Muslim. This is not about killing non-Muslims. The Quran, all of it saying, go and kill them, kill non-Muslims. Chapter 9, verse 29 says, go and kill, specifically, the Christians and the Jews. Why? For they refuse to embrace Islam. That's it. So how, what, what do you mean the Quran says, if you kill a man as if he killed all mankind? That man is a Muslim man. Actually, the coming broadcast, let us say, maybe remind me to, to speak about this topic so we can cover it and we can expose the lies they say to us about if you kill an innocent man as if he killed all mankind all right i want to say thank you for being here may the lord bless you and i advise the muslims uh, to give my video this like because the christians don't give me like so we better get at least get this like i mean we get something out of it <laughs> islam is made by a stupid man for stupid 
people you have to be mentally ill sick to believe in such a cult a cult who teach you that the best man of of of, of the world he have a wife she is six years old at the age of 54 having many wives before and many wives after why in the world he would think about a child to be in his bed unless he is mentally sick Islam fail in ethical examination logical examination uh, anything not only like historical uh, examination science and any, anything Islam fail and if you want to learn more about the stupidity of Islam I advise you to go and get my book sex and Allah which is just published in the beginning of the month and actually I'm really happy that a lot of people buying the books and look like the book is a flying everywhere and uh, uh, most likely Muslims are number one buyers for the book and I understand that because the Muslims they want to learn about things they never heard before about the religion all the information there those who have my book you will see not this book is not a book of a Christian Prince as much it is about you what your Muslims say because everything there is reference of you your scholars your prophet your companions saying things not me so it looked ugly disgusting for you but I did not say a word there except I'm just saying how this happened and how that happened the rest is your story the rest is your text the rest it's you who provide us with the reference I just put it for those who cannot reach to the knowledge and the knowledge is very powerful and those who have the knowledge they will never be defeated you see even war today the war between nations is about knowledge who is the one is losing war is the one who don't have knowledge who is the one who win war is the one who have knowledge why Israel is a super powerful country a country of six millions because they have knowledge otherwise the Muslims they can eat them like a snack we have more than a billion and a half Muslim and we have six million Jews how those people they can protect themselves knowledge knowledge is power so I advise all of you to educate yourself for the more you educate yourself you are a different and new person education change you there's a bad education there's a good education however you can even make from the good education or the bad education you can make something very useful for you as an example I learned about Islam and Islam is an evil religion that is a bad education but I made of the bad education good education so I can save as many as I can from such a cult so yes why not we learn about the bad things so we can save ourselves from it we study viruses we, stu we study bacteria not because we love virus not because we like cancer but because we want to fight the cancer we want to save mankind from death and the death in this case is very horrible thank you for watching and may the Lord bless you all until we see you again maybe this coming Monday Christ is Lord and Islam is false and we see you soon again bye-bye take care